All right, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world, welcome, welcome. We'll be getting started here very shortly with some tournament action. We've got both the players in, loaded, locked in with their armies, ready to go. Uh, which players, you may ask? Well, let's take a look here. South Sea Open number one being hosted on Turin's Total Tavern. A quick look at the bracket as we get loaded in here uh, on this open number one. Even Star, and I actually need to update the other bracket has been filled. We do know uh, that. Yes, it's uh, Medley. Medley is going to be facing off against Even Star. And then we've got, of course, uh, Houseplant versus Rindless here in. This bracket, so we're going to be getting started with them first. Battle of Itza is the map. We've got Corn versus Kislev, classic matchup. Uh, I believe uh, that the stipulations are limit two boar sleds, right? Um, so imagine we won't see a ton of boar sled spam. I mean, obviously, we, uh, rules would not allow that to happen, but even still, a couple of war sleds, not even in the starting army here, quite a wide starting army. Love you guys, cannot forces see so let me go ahead and switch on over to the main screen here as we get loaded in battle of it's a looking fresh as always welcome welcome hopefully you guys are doing well make sure my stream is looking good on the preview here looking good there looking good there welcome yes domination tournament is gonna be a good time get this going here okay oh man youtube is trolling me right now on the back end but anyway let's get started we'll look at the starting armies here for uh corn houseplant coming in with the heavy corn lads two cultists and a herald of corn initially we've got some spawns here uh warriors of chaos warriors of corn even with shields one halberd another spawn out to the other flank meanwhile kids live the opposite side of notice people have been big fans of the ice which they are quite cheap and you also get the summon of course of frost kitten snow leopard and we're also gonna see heart of winter and that's pretty much it arcane conduit as well this iron ice armor does give minus eight melee attack and aoe which is an okay little uh, debuff not crazy good but armored cossars up front We've got a second line of streltsy uh some armored cossars with spears very interesting, so very much an infantry-based Kislev force, at least so far. We don't see the reinforcement pulls. Again, for CA, that would be probably the number one point of feedback for Domination. Please let us, as spectators, see the reinforcement pull. But anyway, got some troops moving up. So far, we're going to see some more uh, Chaos warriors immediately from house plant of course you do start with a little bit of resources now as we see from the supply up there you start with about 500 it doesn't take long to tick up to the 750 you need to bring in those chaos warriors on Kislev's side we're gonna see a patriarch come out on horseback very interesting not see the bear mount i'm not the biggest fan of the horse mount for the patriarch only has 50 armor pretty subpar combat stats i mean he's relatively cheap but the bear mount is just so so strong for him really think that's the option to go for all the Kislev casters to be honest like even the ice switch yes she retains her frostbite when she's on horseback but again the stats are pretty uh, not amazing in particular the armor is the biggest thing the extra armor and hp of the bear is pretty substantial in terms of just allowing your characters to survive it's a slightly bigger hitbox but not really meaningfully bigger and both players just kind of sizing each other up right now Similar situation of what I found myself uh, against uh, Cathay with Horn the other day. You just kind of uh, got this thick defensive formation. You're trying to figure out exactly what's the best way to attack. And the Halberds don't really have any targets to go after besides the characters here. They'll trade okay in the infantry fight, obviously with the AP. And they're all right attack stats, especially for Halberd. 39 attack for Halberd is definitely very solid. Make good armor piercing contact with these armored Kossars at only 43 melee defense. Still. So, Matthew, good to see you. Welcome, oh, welcome. Kossars, Streltsy going to be opening up with their pistols and axe guns. Chaos Warriors press this little ridge right here. Very cool stuff with the uh, purple color scheme. Emily's going to be holding the line with all of this Kislev stuff. 
Cosmars don't have too much ammunition, but their pistols deal quite a substantial amount of damage. Even with the shields there, those Warriors of Corn just getting absolutely shredded. But once they get into contact, they'll start to trade pretty well. Surprised we don't see any Bloodletters initially as well. I mean, Bloodletters are pretty good also in reserve due to their faster speed in comparison to the uh, Chaos Warriors. But we've got some summons here in the center. Coltus can summon up some Bloodletters, try and fight melee on the Streltsy. Cost by dervishes are going to charge in. They'll do some damage to the bloodletters. Definitely looks like the bloodletters are suffering pretty badly there just because of the uh, nature of the engagement. They sort of got summoned, already fully surrounded. Heart of Winter's not going to do too much there. Hits a couple of units, but nothing crazy impactful. But once Korn's able to actually start fighting, you can see them just blasting through these armored Kossars, the Kossar spears. Uh, the Herald of Korn also really good splash attacks for fighting through infantry blobs. Right now, he's fully surrounded again by dervishes. But uh, once he actually realizes the situation, yeah, it looks like he's trying to maybe force path through right now. I'm not really sure, but not doing any attack animations is rough. Zargard also coming through. They'll trade all right. It'll take them some time to beat Warriors of Corn, uh, but they definitely will. No question about that. So looking good all so far there. A lot of the Kislev units starting to get the Bayar Blood passive, but likewise, a lot of units for Corn starting to go down as well. These spawn have taken a lot of damage here. Really haven't dished up, dished out that much damage, I think, in return. Let's see if I can get the actual spawn up. Yeah, barely 300 damage in terms of output. And tactically, they've been able to collapse this flank pretty aggressively and prevent this point from being captured. Meanwhile, Corn has captured high ground, so starting to take a slight advantage on victory tickets. And this engagement here in the center, oh yeah, definitely starting to go in Corn's favor big time. The cost by dervishes just don't have the hitting power or the staying power hold up in this type of an engagement they get absolutely mopped the angry corn lads the spicy boys the spicy spawns very angry still trying to finish off the scene of abstral team that's fighting with the fire blood but it looks like the last of the spawn is going to go down Oof. the might have taken a couple of friendly hits there but the arrows of the cossars are able to finish off identical we have thing a you know whatever it Keep is it who even ball. knows Looks like we're going to see another Heart of Winter here in the center. It should do a ton of damage. Help Kislev win back this melee fight. It's going to hit two heavy infantry units, maybe even clipping this Flesh Hound unit. No, it doesn't look like it's actually hitting the center mass of the unit, so it's not impacting them on damage or anything. Did pretty good. Kislev is just, uh, yeah, it's trying to fight back. In terms of army damage value, oh man, that's rough. They haven't actually captured this low ground objective yet. Even though Kislev is slightly ahead on army damage value, really not by much. Certainly nothing unsalvageable from Corn, but this number three objective still has not been secured. So, uh, House plan able to take an advantage of almost a uh, 750 points, 750 some victory tickets so far. Finally, that last point does get secured though. And in the center, counterattack is on. I love this sort of push pull now of the larger domination armies, where like one player will start to gain an advantage, and then reinforcements arrive and. The other army starts to push back a little bit, and then it's a really nice back and forth kind of push pull. Um, and it makes sense a little bit if your entire army is maybe not in the battle that wants the reinforcements. Like, we just have to hold this ground until reinforcements arrive. Once they do arrive, then we can push the enemy back, or, you know, maybe there's, uh, like, artifacts or, I don't know some kind of a like this, this circle of power or something here that you have to capture i don't know make up whatever you want in terms of uh in your mind it looks like there's actually a circle of power over here so maybe there's some kind of like magical you know ritual significance to these circles of power that you need to hold and this one represents the temple up here i don't know anyway getting back to the battle of hand we've got kossars moving in more kossar spears being summoned up uh, the Flesh Hound's absolutely just devouring a lot of these tattered units out in the periphery, which is great. We've also got some blood letters moving in. These are just straight up regular old blood letters. They will absolutely cleave the Kossars, be able to secure that objective pretty decisively. So, um, yeah, both players doing a pretty good job so far. Kislev Cavalry responding, Kossabai Dervish's Wing Lancers move up. They don't have the same kind of capture weight as the infantry, but they can capture that point number two relatively quickly. As long as Kislev uh, tries to get a two cap here, they still have plenty of time left, obviously. Still plenty of game left. We're going to see a big corn sword drop. Oh, Kossars. I mean, it is just a unit of Kossars at the end of the day, so not the worst thing that could happen, but still, 
Definitely wanted that reinforcement to be able to try and get in on this center objective. Although, look at these Zargar just holding out so firm against the Flesh Hounds, against the spawn. A high melee defense, high armor means they'll be able to tank tons of damage in this type of situation. Part of Winter also helps Kislev units win somewhat. The Bloodletters won't take as much damage from that, obviously, because they're magical resistance, but uh, or spell resistance rather. They will take mitigated damage, certainly. Kislev is still holding that center objective, and it looks like this top objective has been secured as well. Right at the same time, Horn's able to secure the bottom the down here, so Horn keeps himself from getting two, uh, three capped, and even comes back with an immediate two cap with the winning this center fight pretty decisively. Those Bloodletters came in and really just mopped up the scene. For me personally, Bloodletters are the way to go in this matchup. I mean, you may want to take a few Shielded Warriors, maybe a couple Halberds, but Blood letters, they just trade so well into all of Kislev infantry. They trade well even into Kislev cavalry just because of their high offense, high armor piercing. Uh, they'll trade easily into the chariots, even if the chariots stay in combat for too long against them, just because, again, that high AP, high offensive output. Uh, so, I, in general, I think blood letters are a pretty good staple, but you know, obviously, Houseplant is still doing just fine with mostly warriors and the blood letters in reserve, which is definitely a smart way to go. Let the, blur, let the shielded warriors sort of absorb that initial damage and, uh, and fire and charge and everything of Kislev. And the blood letters can come in and mop up, which is pretty much what's been happening. More flesh hounds coming in here, beating up those armored Kossars, and pushing back the cost of my dervishes. So it looks like pretty decisive two cap from Korn at this point as they're able to just beat down and shatter the Kislev army. Kislev does have quite a few tattered units you can see there being unsummoned so they can replenish and try and get brought back into the fight to make more, more counter push here. Uh, but it's born in a pretty commanding position at this point. It's definitely not at the point of no return yet, but another halberd unit coming up to just sit and secure. Having this single halberd may seem a little bit risky, but actually in, it's not too, too risky because, of course, they can just sit there so independently and just hold that objective. Kislev has to commit uh, infantry, basically, to go take them out, right? Like, they can't commit global forces necessarily to go over there and try and finish them off. But anyway, pretty good stuff. There is a tiny bit of prize money online. Really nothing super substantial for today, but it looks like with the three cap, that is going to be the dagger in uh, Rhineless's attempt here. But let's let them finish it out. Looking pretty, pretty hopeless for Kislev at this point. No sleds is definitely a, is definitely a bold move. I mean, you are playing Kislev without their number one like OP unit. And here's the thing: some people were saying that Kislev is as a faction is OP. I definitely disagree with that. I think without sleds, Kislev actually would be amazing. So, like, while the sleds 100% do need nerfs, I would agree with that, especially in weapon strength and mass. Um, they shouldn't get nerfed too hard, otherwise I, I worry about Kislev in certain matchups, like this one uh, in particular, but we didn't see like Elemental Bear, we didn't see any Bear Riders here either, it was pretty much just an all infantry based force, which you know, is pretty decent, uh, Kislev infantry is definitely solid, but it's not amazing in my opinion, I, mean, I just, especially in comparison to Korn infantry, like in this specific matchup, Korn has the best infantry in the game. And even after the integration, once we get Immortal Empires, Korn is still going to have the best infantry in the game in many respects, um, especially in cost efficiency. So I just, I feel like this is sort of playing into Korn's strengths a little bit here, but let me know what you guys think. Nerf their speed. Yeah, I would say speed also. Like, I think probably the light war sled should be like 68 and the heavy war sled should be like 60 maybe, because I mean... You look at the war wagons they're like 50 speed it's well, war wagons are definitely going to need some help eventually but yeah great game to both players cultists get some great value back there the corn cultists are just awesome in combat especially for how cheap they are albers actually perform quite well also like me kind of poo-pooing on them but uh, the blood letters two blood letters come in here trade very cost effectively the summoned ones also did as well no doubt flesh hounds an amazing unit pretty standard corn stuff nice sort of wide wide corn build here i like that i don't know if i love the eye switch boris is i've had the most success against corn with in this matchup personally it just boris you no know, anti-large ap he can fight big scary corn stuff pretty well 
Uh, the Streltsy, again, I like the idea of it, but they can be tough to protect in this matchup. I do like the Armored Cossars. Cossars, I mean, you can't really go wrong with those lower tier cost-effective cheap units. The Zargard, I actually do kind of like this pick. I don't know if I would take that many, but uh, definitely just mix in some sleds here and you'd be just, just fine. Maybe the Elemental Bear as well with the extra melee defense and the lower cost. It's going to be a little bit easier to make work in this matchup. But anyway, let's go ahead and get the next one locked in. I'm going to do Crossing of the Sea of Claws for the next map. Let these guys get their army picks locked in on uh, Discord here while I sit and chat with you guys. Let me make sure the chat was having a bug here. So, yeah, 56 on the dragon. Thank you, Great Book of Grudges. Yeah, well, that was a good that was a good rush, and uh, uh, Houseplant played that very well. Houseplant, for those of you guys who don't know, and I, I assume this is still the house, same Houseplant, but I remember watching this guy on, on like, Rome 2 videos on Air of Carthage's channel way, way back in the day, you know, in the Stone Age of, of uh, not the Stone Age of Total War, but certainly the Stone Age of Total War on YouTube in many ways. <laughs> So I, he's a very experienced player, and the way he, that he played that, just very patiently, like, collecting all of his forces and then striking out at the flanks, you know, really overpowering, concentrating his value well on specific points to kind of break them down and then roll up, uh, you know, other areas. Very, very good play, honestly. Great stuff. And good use of reinforcements, too. Good timing. Reinforcements in the right place at the right time. Definitely very important. Bronze Age. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's one way of putting it. Or I guess it is literally the Iron Age, right? So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Good, good stuff. Let me check here. Yes, Demons of Chaos are allowed in this particular uh, format. The only stipulation is you're not allowed to bring any greater demons or soul grinders, right? So basically your only like large SEM, large expensive SEM is going to be your Lord, um, which makes them a little bit predictable in that way. The rest of the roster is still pretty unpredictable in terms of what you can do. Taking like blues and some blood letters and you know just like a, a mix of different things, it could be tough to predict whether they might go rush or whether they might go like arranged. Yeah, hard to say. Brindless going Nurgle here. It looks like so. Houseplant is. Cool. And I'm having Medley and Eastar play their games right now so that we can just go in and jump the re jump on the replays and get through those super quick and then move on to the final um, in in expedient fashion. Hopefully, I mean, the tournament today ran relatively smoothly. I mean, pretty much no issues, actually. I, when I say relatively, I mean completely smoothly. Uh, no issues at all. So that's great. Uh, so hopefully we don't have any more issues going forward. But I foresee that, uh, you know, if we have a couple of 2-0 sweeps, we could probably be done within a couple of hours. But I mean, I had planned to start the stream uh, right around now. So we're already ahead of schedule in that way, which is great. Great, great, great. Get to get this tournament done. Have some fun, have a blast, and then other stuff done too. Like I got some uh, pat patron practice sessions coming up this weekend. Pretty nice, uh, pretty nice here out in the western U.S. in Utah. <laughs> uh, that would be cool. It would be cool if they had like a ching 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 ching, and then like a long reload time, like a little machine gun almost. Yeah, the Outrider, Outrider repeaters. I'm stoked for Empire, man. I'm so stoked for Empire. It's going to be so good. So, so good. Like, just, ah, oh, just spamming the points with Pistoliers and Huntsmen and Spearmen and Swordsmen and Halberds and Flagellants. 
like that that wide empire zerg swarm is actually probably going to be very very strong especially like your missile units are so good for how cost effective they are like i really huntsmen are going to be a nightmare for a lot of factions to deal with <laughs> like can you imagine how fast how fast like two huntsmen could dps down even like great unclean one i mean just that that low armor against the anti lard bows of so nasty and the fact that they have stock and vanguard too means you can vanguard them you know bring them in on a vanguard point potentially sneak them close to an objective to ambush some big expensive target um of empire plays yeah man i'm like pissed leers of course vanguarding onto the point grenade launchers vanguarding fast onto a point to just start blasting some immobile troops like oh oh man it's gonna be good Dawi too, actually. Some people think Dawi might be terrible. I think on certain maps, Dawi might struggle, but definitely on maps where you get to the objective relatively quickly and set up a defensive position, uh, I think once they're in that, Dawi are going to be really hard to dislodge for a lot of factions. But uh, three pistoliers, two huntsmans. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Now you're speaking my language. Starting army would be a steam tank, arch lector, steam tank, a caster, or maybe no caster actually. Bring the caster in reserve. Maybe just an arch lector and a steam tank, and uh, you know a bunch of state troops, and then vanguard. In in vanguard reserve, you got your huntsmen, your pistoliers, maybe uh, yeah, your caster. I've already sort of been theory crafting armies in in domination of like okay what would I take in this matchup like me thinking about the matchups for Empire yeah you definitely don't want to give Dali objectives for sure um, yeah uh, where was I even going with this uh, like okay so certain factions like okay if you think through like Empire versus Nurgle, for example, like, okay, you're definitely going to want the Banner of Eternal Flame, Warrior Priest, maybe even two of them with Balthazar as the caster, just so you can maximize your fire damage, although you won't be getting Kindle Flame that way. So maybe you take, uh, w my thinking here is that you would want, initially, you'd want that Warrior Priest standing near your artillery so that he can give fire damage to, you know, cannons if they're trying to shoot any big scary things. Um, and then, you know, later on in the battle, you'd want to move them up to fight with your melee troops, get some soul fires, other buffs too. I mean, it's not just the banner of Eternal Flame, but definitely you'd do that. And probably a lot of shooting, like, uh, mobile shooting specifically, because Nurgle's so slow, like, you could probably just trundle and troll with Pistoliers for an hour. And, like, Huntsmen too are relatively quick, I think, if I remember right. So, like, lots of Huntsmen, Pistoliers, dumping fire, uh grenade launch for two um yeah ah uh, yes we've got bellacore bellacore is so so strong guys well, let's see how he does here he is very very expensive but i would say he's probably worth it he does have 10k hp 500 weapon strength 70 attack pretty decent stats does lack armor but he has a uh, lore of shadows which pit of shades is very good right now uh, since Pendulum was nerfed, I think most people are going to tech into Pit of Shades now. Okay, good to know. Game volume is maybe a little bit too loud, or maybe I'm a little bit too uh, too quiet on my microphone. Sorry. Just adjusting a couple things here. Let's adjust this down just a little bit. Oh, no, not that high. Alright, let's see if that's better. Free company, oh yeah, free company will be fantastic against Nurgle because they can like, they can shoot anything, right? They can dump a lot of DPS immediately into like, uh, whatever, you know, whatever unit you need them to, and then they'll even fight reasonably well in melee against stuff like Nurglings, and uh, I don't, they'll probably trade pretty bad with Plague Bearers, but I mean they'll hold them in place for some time. Just because of Plague Bearers lack of offensive stats. Speaking of which. Uh, I've got a nice mixed force here. Bellacore is immediately going to drop down and just start to smash these cultists directly in the face. We've got a Beast of Nurgle and an Exalted Great Unclean One moving in to try and fight Bellacore. Uh, more Plague Bears for Nurgle. We've got some Nurglings down on the low ground, some Furies up in the air. For the Demons of Chaos, we've got uh, some Plague Bears here. 
Three Plague Bears, it looks like, with some horrors backing them up. One pink and two blues. We've got Blood Letters and Blue Horrors down there. Regular non aligned Furies, which will definitely lose to the Corn Furies. There's no doubt. The extra offensive output in particular of the... Uh, uh, Frenzy, right? Oh, no, they're... What am I saying? They're Nurgle Furies. Poison. I mean, they should still win just because of the poison, right? Makes enough of a difference, but let's see. Got some Flamers moving in here. Elkor not taking any Slanesh troops so far. Maybe we'll see some uh, Slanesh mobility coming out of reserves here in just a moment, but he's taken a pretty wide stance here. Houseplant testing all three objectives immediately. Which puts Nurgle in a really uncomfortable position because ultimately Nurgle's best at like contesting two objectives. It's pretty hard to consistently uh, try and uh, capture three objectives, but this is not super great either. It looks like some of these uh, pink horrors and the uh, flamers are in a position to start shooting. Great unclean one. He's going to have to be very, very careful as he comes forward. Although he has a huge amount of HP, he will get blasted very, very quickly. And the Flamers, oh, the Flamers just making brutal, brutal contact. Cultists come forward and force them away, but barely get any uh, barrier damage. No real HP damage. I'm going to see some Plague Bears. Summon Plague Bears. Move in. Or Nurgle, Beast of Nurgle moving in, but oh, this this ranged fire. Yeah, the Furies immediately jumped down on the blue and pink horrors here, but will it be enough? At the end of the day, the uh, online Furies counter charging in. Meanwhile, we've got an engagement down on this low ground here. These uh, Nurgle Furies just getting absolutely shredded by play, uh, uh, blood letters. Oh man, those, those blood letters are very. Oh, they're exalted blood letters. Oh man, that's nasty. That is just absolutely nasty. This is a really, really gross build, I have to say. So Nurgle's at least able to contest in the center, like I said, with all of that, uh, all those resources and everything else you would expect them to hopefully be able to pretty well. But uh, that stream of corruption, unfortunately, didn't make the best contact. Did get a little bit of a chunk of those blue horrors, certainly. But uh, Bellacor coming in and just wrecking Plague Toads there, and it's already not looking great. Really, really bad actually in terms of army damage value. House plants almost 3,000 damage value ahead. And of course, that is somewhat of what Nurgle does, is just take a lot of damage, and usually they're behind on army damage value anyway, even in games where they win. But this is a really extreme amount to have immediately at the start of the battle. You can see the Great Unclean one trying to pull away, trying to get away from those flaming, burning magical shots of Zinchian units here. Flamers are disgusting. Have plenty of ammunition left. That melee defense debuff does put them down to 20, but uh, Bellicorn moving in with a bit of shades just going to clean up. Oh man, Fleshy Abundance is used. Is all the Great and Clean ones going to hang in that fight a little bit longer because of that Fleshy Abundance? If he has Fecundity or anything else, that would be a time to use it right about now. But, uh, I mean, at this point, he's just buying time One more than anything else. And, I mean, almost, yeah, almost 5,000 damage value ahead now. 6,000 damage value ahead now. Or house plant. Oh, man. Uh, I would imagine, Ravazar, yes, it is in preparation for the blood at DLC. I have no idea when it's coming out, though, to be honest. Well, consider, Jerry, that all of the regenerations have been reworked. You can actually go... Well, I don't think you can see the items, unfortunately, but I want to say they have 0.2%, because remember, all heals are percentage-based now, right? So, uh, like, I think, like, Volkmar, uh, Boris, Lingvald, all those characters who have the items that give them, like, the top tier of healing, I think are going to have a... 0.2% heals per second is what I'm guessing because like the passive heals the basic passive heals right now are as they are in the game are zero like we can actually look right here at the Beast of Miracle at his regeneration it's a 0.1 heals per second right so yeah Rhineless is uh, doing his best he's more than 6,000 damage value behind now he's trying to trying to come back and at least get some tests on the objective but I mean exalted blood letters here exalted blood letters over here that is a nasty, nasty build. Houseplant really optimizing his build very well in terms of cost to be able to bring all of these units. That 
Larger starting army funds means <laughs> like Demons of Chaos are even scarier now. Maybe there's a reason why uh, they should not be allowed in tournaments, but I wanted to give them a shot here just to see how much of an impact they would have on the meta. So far, they have been very impressive. I mean, obviously, Bellacore is nasty. And I think most of the greater demons are actually not good enough to be banned right now. Like, even if you had access to, you know, the Great Unclean One, the Lord of Change, like, would you actually end up bringing them? I'm not sure. Maybe the Lord of Change. I don't think, though, maybe Bloodthirster in some matchups. But I don't think... I mean, the Soul Grinders, I think, would be a lot more commonly picked than greater demons. I don't know. Good. Yeah, Bellicor is very, very strong. You can beat him. Like, I've, I've lost games with Bellicor before, but he is crazy good. I knew it. And it looks like Ryan List is going to withdraw there. Houseplant yours. takes a 2-0 victory on the day. So let's go ahead and just take a look at the values quickly here. Yeah, I mean, the Exalted the Exalteds do quite well. They face very little true challenge themselves. Uh, in this matchup, Nurgle, I mean, besides, like, Toads and Magic, they actually don't have a great answer for the Exalted Blood Letters. Uh, Flamer's also pretty good in this matchup. Yeah, just, I mean, it's Demons of Chaos versus Nurgle. Definitely a rough one. Definitely a rough one. Okay, anyway, let me go ahead and switch this screen over here. We'll do this. Uh, house plan on to the final and now we got medley versus even star let me just get the uh, replays they have already played through this series so we can this this here Okay, and let's go to the replays then. One second. Okay, now we've got replays. Of yes, of uh, medley versus. I have them in the right order and everything. Okay, so first up, we've got a matchup with uh, Cathay versus Ogre Kingdoms. Definitely an interesting matchup. Cathay is in a better position now, but they certainly could still have a tough time. But uh, let's see, Xiao Ming. Be bringing him. Forces. He's got an Astromancer, uh, four Jade Warriors, four Peasant Long Spears, and four Peasant Bowmen. On the other side, we've got a Slaughter Master, two Stonehorn Hunters, I would imagine. Yeah, this is the new Ogre Cheese. Since uh, Iron Blasters were nerfed, which, by the way, Iron Blasters are still very good. People haven't been digging them, but they're still very, very good can still pay for themselves in just a couple of volleys against the right targets. But uh, this is the new Ogre Cheese right here. Is these things are insane. They've got a huge amount of HP, over 10,000 HP. Uh, they've got 35% missile resistance, 15% ward safe with this item active, which also gives them stock and unspottable until they go into combat for the first time. This item probably should just be straight up removed from these guys. But anyway, uh, they've also got an anti-large AP uh, armor piercing shooting attack. Uh, yeah, said AP twice, but anyway, um, they're just, they're ridiculous. 110 armor, don't have the most weapon strength in the world, but quite a tanky monster for sure. And for Cathay, it can be tough to take them out because really your best option for killing them is missile units and that missile resistance and the stock and spotable, you know, everything else just makes it so, so hard to do anything. Yeah, let's, uh, let's see what they can do here. Got a cannon coming in for Cathay. 
probably would have started with a cannon, honestly. But uh, you can see immediately the bulls and some of the other large units that would be vulnerable to the cannon start to pull back. So even just the threat and the pressure of the cannon is so extreme that uh, it's forcing the ogres to respond. But of course, even Star making his way with these stocked hunters, you actually could get a force of gorgers, noblar trappers, and these hunters with this item active to all be stocked and get a huge, like, stock uh, ambush force to get around your opponent's lines and get into combat here, which is, I think, probably what's going to happen, just minus, you know, the gorgers and the trappers. Feels weird, man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the High Elf Archmage had a similar item that didn't work on dragons, but worked for every other mount. Yeah, and even, like, for the Eagle mount, is arguable as, as to whether or not the Eagle mount should even be allowed. But, oh man, Astromancer, hidden in the woods here, actually gets seen by the Hunter. The Hunter's gonna come in and take him out. That is very, very rough. Yeah. Yeah, even cannons will struggle, that's true. 45 resistance versus missiles. Yeah, so... That's why, like, I think r remove that item first and foremost when they're on the Stonehorn Mount. Um, and then the second thing would be to probably reduce the missile resistance down to, like, 25%. 35% is just so high for any faction that relies on missiles to deal damage to big monsters. Like, obviously, Cathay currently, even Kislev to a degree. Uh, definitely Empire in the future. Dwarfs, absolutely. Like, all of these factions are just going to struggle pretty hard against... Ooh, he uses a little cannon breath attack there to just devastate those peasant long spears. Yao started the battle with lots of wins. I guess that's true. Yeah, that's true. It just it would have been nice to have that extra mastery of the elemental wins throughout the course of the battle, but yeah, not a lot you can do about that with these stocked stone horns. So, uh Medley here is playing as Cathay and uh Yes, even Star is Ogre Kingdoms. I do not have the score banners currently set up on my new PC, Romulan Dog. I uh, didn't didn't have time to get everything I needed to set up for today. I just wanted to, I wanted to do it because I wanted to do it. You know, I've, I've been honestly missing hosting tournaments. Like I was feeling pretty down about the game that initial weekend with the lobbies being broken. Just I'm, I'm not gonna lie, a hundred percent killed my motivation to host anything for a while but i honestly have been missing it and kind of wanting to get back into it so yeah this is mostly for me for today <laughs> yeah i i think it makes some sense i think it's just it's too much for the game balance like i definitely think they need to keep the missile resistance like a, a substantial amount but i think 25 percent is fine i mean you look at units with like magic resistance innately or or physical resistance they're usually in that 20 to 30 range Know, which of course 25 sits right in the middle of so i would say 25 would probably be a good place to go and then kind of see maybe you need to bring it back up to 30 but i think that's probably fine Ooh, nice little fist drop right here right in the front lines of cafe uh really nice final transmutation as well it's going to do a ton of damage to all of these ogre bulls hits the slaughter master for a ton of damage as well zhao if he wants to, he doesn't necessarily need to transform here because the Slaughter Master doesn't have any armor. Zhao can actually just fight just fine there. And uh, believe it or not, the Slaughter Masters actually do have a missile block chance as well, which I think, are they the only Ogre Lord to actually have a missile block chance, which might make them somewhat meta in this matchup, but oh, nasty, brutal side shots from those lead belters into the uh, peasant archers there. If they just trying to continue to hold objectives as much as they can, but Fortunately, because of the lack of mobility, there's no pressure up on this high ground objective. It's all just infantry. Uh, you know, they're somewhat grouped up now moving in to try and support, but just a lot of infantry, right? And that is the, the sad thing about Cathay. Really a lack of any meaningful mobility. Thanks, Robin, and I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Transform to tear out the bulls. I see. Okay. I see. Yeah. It makes sense. I mean, get the terror going. And, uh, yeah. Uh, one thing about ogres, probably their biggest weakness currently is just the somewhat low leadership. Not all their units have low leadership, but definitely bulls and noblars. A lot of the sort of lower to mid-tier stuff. 
doesn't have the best leadership in the world, so you can terror shock route them. But these guys right now, they're all winning too decisively. Be terror routed, like maybe you're going to be able to get rid of this unit of bulls right here. But uh, the halberds and spears arriving. Bulls flanking here. The Iron Fist and the Noblars getting back up and through. And and, Nob and uh, even Star here has been doing a great job of maneuvering his forces in such a way that they don't... Uh, they're almost never getting a frontal charge. Like, you see how he, like, moves up and around the side here. Like, this unit moves up and around the side here. Like, there's really no reason to just go. And, of course, as soon as I say that, he charges literally into the front of some chain Alberts. <laughs> That's fine. They're getting shelled anyway, so they're probably done for. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've got some more Jade Warriors moving in. The Stonehorn, though, just running rampant in the back line, just on a rampage, destroying everything that tries to get in here. Yeah, all the damage you pile on with Stonehorn and one Troll Guts negated. I agree. That's, that's the reason why is... If a unit that tanky plus healing means it's functionally impossible for most armies to kill if they rely on missiles again to kill those big monsters. So. Yeah, Peasant Archers with Plague of Rust. I mean, even like two Celestial Crossbowmen concentrating fire is going to... I mean, they're going to do damage, certainly, but it's not as much as you might think because of that missile resistance. And again, the percentage-based healing on that massive HP pool, it's it's rough for sure. Right now, Medley's managing to hang on to the lead here, just barely in terms of tickets. Uh, just been able to continuously recapture, but right now, even Star is pressing. Uh, might even be able to go for a full three cap here. Uh, there was an Iron Blaster brought, used up almost all of its ammunition. And let's check the value on it. Yeah, 135 kills, only 580 value, so that's great. Nice to see the Iron Blaster just straight up underperform. I don't know if I've ever seen that before, an Iron Blaster use all of its ammo and not pay for itself, but... Yeah, the Stone Horns more than make up for it. And unfortunately, the Slaughtermaster manages to stay alive. I say unfortunately. Unfortunately for Cafe. Fortunately for even Star and his Ogres. Watermaster stays alive, Stonehorn stay alive, and it's just all much, much too much at this point. Mm, yes, Ogre shooting is so ridiculous. I figured Ogres would be a very strong shooting faction. I didn't think they would be quite this broken, but there you go. Oof. There it is, but hey, uh, Medley still again contesting the objectives, actually recapturing the center objective now. This huge spam of halberds has so much capture weight that as the uh, Stonehorn kind of maneuvers off, and it looks like Zhao is able to come in and tear out away the Slaughtermaster. Very clutch play there. Uh, in terms of points, this is actually very, very close. We don't get to see the army damage value, unfortunately, as it's not a live game. This is actually a replay. Um, but let's see, manages to capture that high ground objective with the mobility of the Peasant Horseman. Uh, does come through, though, and starting to make his presence felt up there. Bulls as well. I mean, Peasants managed to buy some time, but really that's the best they can do. So, guys. <laughs> yeah, the best they can hope to do is really just buy some time. And they were able to buy a little bit, but not really a meaningful amount. Uh, yeah, especially not when that center objective, unfortunately, wasn't quite able to be wrested away from the ogres. Got pretty close, but now a lot of ogre units are pressing up for even star. He might even consider, I mean, maybe unsummoning like these lead belters and a couple of these other, other tattered units to allow them to heal, get back up into the fight. Yeah, I, iron hills, I agree, are too short. Really, you just want cannons. I think... Like, when I've played land battles in this matchup, granted, I haven't played this matchup in the new domination format with the higher starting funds, but in land battle domination, I had a lot of success against ogres going straight up like uh, vampire coasts with, like, tons of cheap spears and halberds and cannons, and that's pretty much it, right? Like, literally, like, 10, like 10 to 15 anti-large infantry and four cannons and that was a build that i had some success with it was very very much coast like for sure vampire coast like but no 
The enemy has slain our lord. Yeah, well, it's not so much about the, the Iron Hell Gutters getting countershot as it is them, uh, in this matchup at least, as it is them getting rushed by, like, yeah, high mass ogres. Just they don't, their damage output is not good enough, in my opinion, to justify bringing them, but. Yeah. I don't know. I just don't know if I love the Terracotta Sentinel. Invested. Yep. There is only and the there it is. Victory for the Ogres. Ogres definitely still proving that they are quite solid. And those Stonehorns, maybe we need to limit Stonehorns to one for the time being until we get the next balance patch because they are quite nasty. Especially for factions which rely on missiles to deal damage, which Cafe is definitely one of them. Prison archers do manage to pay for themselves still, but I mean, tactically, they didn't really do the job of getting rid of those big monsters. Same thing, like the cannon pays for itself, but yeah <laughs> i believe it i believe it i mean i see i you got a lot going for you here tons of anti-large infantry right um like as much cheap anti-large infantry as you can get access to you got plenty of calves as well i might cut one cab for one more cannon but that's just me and it kind of depends on the map too like on that map where you have a lot of open space you could have brought like three to four cannons if you really wanted to be a degenerate but yeah, they didn't bring stone horns. Uh, that and then again, yeah, that many cannons, even with that many cannons, especially considering the stone horns approach with that stock extra missile resistance, right? So it's rough for sure. Oh, even stars a very good player too, so no shame in that. Okay, let's just quickly run through here. Not a lot else to talk about. All right, let's get to the next replay. Let me try. Okay, and now we're on the Mountains of Morn. We've got... Well, against Kairos Fate Weaver. Yes, Nurgle versus Zinch is always a rough time. And if, if you can avoid picking into this one as much as possible, I definitely would. I mean, maybe it's better now with some of the changes to Nurgle. But until Zinch gets some additional nerfs, this is going to continue to be a very, very tough matchup. But let's see here. Nurgle going to deploy. We're going to fast forward a little bit through this initial phase as both players kind of move in their forces as we do have some more games to get to. And I'm them relatively quickly. So, Furies all moving in. We've got a mass attack. Furies, Doom Knights, Lord of Change, actually, alongside Kairos. So, maximum flying power here from the forces of Change, which I like quite a bit. Uh, you don't see the Lord of Change a ton, but I think actually he's quite cost-effective. 1700 for a pretty decent flying monster with barrier. Also comes with a couple of spells kitted in there as well. It's pretty good value in my opinion. It's a nice, uh, whatever that spell is. The little magic missile there on the Herald of Nurgle. It doesn't do a ton of damage, honestly. And you probably want to save the Winds of Magic just for Kairos to cast up because his blue fire will literally just deal more damage. There you go. There you go. We've got some Toads moving up into the center to fight some Spawn of Zinch. Interesting. Interesting choice on the Spawn. I guess just to have lots of unbreakable capture power to be able to hold down an objective. Uh, but you don't really need the armor sundering here. I don't know. Bit of an odd choice, in my opinion, in this matchup. But hey, let's see how they do. I'm not one to criticize. Let's see. Uh, yeah, that, hey, great job, Medley, honestly. It's, uh, yeah, considering first tournament getting past the first round and you get to the semifinals, that's pretty impressive stuff. No shame in losing the even star. Like I said, he is a very experienced, very good player. Um, basic Stonehorn, right? Yeah, the basic Stonehorn no one takes because the Hunter Mount is basically the same price and it comes with, uh, you know, the ability to take all those extra items and abilities. And it also has, I think, more leadership. It has Encourage. It has an arm-piercing anti-large shooting attack. So 
There's just not a lot of reason to uh, take the regular Stonehorn. Yeah, exactly. Goops. Goops had it right. Yeah, I mean, Cathay is pretty solid. Kislev, if you're if you're playing Cathay, Kislev is a good second choice, I would say. Um, I just don't love Nurgle. That's my own personal, you know, play style. I don't. I tend to not enjoy playing the really slow factions like Dwarfs and Nurgle and that that sort of stuff. So I don't know if I'm the best person to say, but yeah. The biggest thing is, of course, once we get Immortal Empires, there's going to be literally like 25 factions to choose from. So, <laughs> you know, learn whatever you want, whatever you think is cool. That's ultimately the biggest determining factor is what are you going to enjoy playing? One of the reasons I don't play, again, Nurgle, Coast, Dwarfs, factions like that super often is because I don't really enjoy it. I like, uh, I like playing mobile factions. I enjoy that much more. Double Big Bird just running around trolling this poor Herald here. He is just having a really, really bad time. And they're actually doing a surprising amount of damage to him. Looks like we're going to see a Harmonic Convergence or Regrowth. Uh, oh, no. It's actually, I was going to say, that's a weird Regrowth. But, no, it's Fleshy Abundance, actually, on the uh, Ultist. Or the, the Herald. My brain's getting a fried. <laughs> You're into despair. Nurgle's good for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Greenskins, Bretonia... Bretonia, I was a little bit worried about, but with the fixes to collision damage, cavalry do seem to be performing much better. So I think Bretonia will be just fine. Uh, also, at some point, I, I have no doubt that Games Workshop will release an update for the old world uh, for Bretonia that brings in a bunch of new stuff. But anyway, this massive flying force here on the ground, backed up by Forsaken Blue Horrors. We've got the spawns over here as well, some more Blue Horrors. So very strong force of Zinch, controlling objective number one. Objective number three being controlled just by a single blue horror while Nurgle goes all in in the center. Again, this is sort of one of the weaknesses of Nurgle is really, if you have a hard time contesting multiple objectives at the same time on these larger maps because your army's so slow, even with the changes to Plague Bears, it certainly does help. Plague Bears are in here, they're trading all right. Nurgle is the people's factions, I guess, if you say so. Tomb Kings. Tomb Kings are going to be an interesting one. I think they might struggle in some matchups. But, uh, I mean, Ushanti Great Wolves are going to be insane, as they always have been. Yeah, Kislev. Kislev Chariots are extremely overpowered. You're right. I've already made some comments to CA about them through back channels, and I have no doubt that they'll get some more nerfs in the next update, whenever that is. We just... We have no idea. There was a few, you know, like Blue Horrors or another one that needed some nerfs and they didn't get any. Personally, I think Siege Spawn should also be like 50 cost more than the other variants of Spawn because... Oh, the enemy has slain our because, Lord. yeah. You know. Uh, yes, Infernal Gateway right here would be amazing. But... Poison Winds are going to be great. Uh, Death Runners and Eshin Triads are going to be great in Domination. I mean, the fact that you can just keep spamming bodies... Um, like the infinite capture weight basically out of the point for Skaven is going to be quite strong. Like I, I can give you reasons why all of the, the old factions will be good and probably some good reasons why they will be bad as well. But The horrors got nerfed. Uh, did all of Zinch get nerfed though? I mean, I know they made the, the, uh, barrier recharge time longer, but I don't think, yeah, I, I don't think it's going to do much. Yeah, I can see, you know, that uh, at this point, Zinch has pretty much killed all of Nurgle's army, and uh, they have almost nothing left on the field, so it's been pretty brutal, you can definitely say. Uh, yeah, Mentally's been doing a great job trying to contest for points, but I mean, just in, in terms of trades, it's probably the toughest matchup for Nurgle right now just because Zinch's de missile DPS and, and speed and just destroyed. general trolliness is a problem for, uh, for Nurgle to deal with. So that's it for that. Great job by Medley. Great attempt and good job making it to this point. Uh, even Star moves on to the final, though. So let me go ahead and just get the bracket up one more time. 
move even star along to face off against house plant let me now reho hobby going okay i also need to go grab a drink of water guys so while we get these guys into the finals lobby let's go grab a drink of water you all should grab a drink of water too make sure to stay hydrated it's here to Alrighty, folks, I'll be right back. Okay, I am returned. So, start on. Just saw Mountains of Morn. So, we'll start with Crossing of the Claws again. Excellent. Got them both in here. They're just getting the arm locked in. Getting their maps over to them. Y'all have enjoyed. It's been an absolute pleasure today. Having a lot of fun doing this tournament. It's been too long since I've got to do something like this for you guys. So, yeah. Been been an absolute pleasure. Uh, more tournaments will be going forward. Hopefully, at least once a week, if not more. Definitely, will be streaming more often too. Like I'm planning on probably jumping into some campaign streams this week 
um possibly monday um probably monday maybe we'll see if i have time for some fun tomorrow i may i may just do a little fun fun throwaway stream for tomorrow but yep 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 um anyway to answer some more questions here how are more fangs performing since the wizard fixes they seem to be okay i've had a couple of games with them and uh generally if they're used well they can pay for themselves so yeah, standard variant is probably the best one just because they're the most cost effective. I did have a game where crushers with great weapons, or I think it was actually just shielded crushers. Yeah, the shielded crushers were able to win. No, I think it was the great weapons, actually. Anyway, I don't know. I, they they paid for themselves. They got like 2,100 value um, at uh, against Nurgle, which Nurgle's lack of anti-large AP... But I think the Ogre Cavalry is pretty good in that matchup. I I ended up losing the battle due to my own mistakes. But yeah, maybe I'll end up showing that one to you guys. I don't know if I actually saved it, unfortunately. But they seem okay. Again, it's still, like Robin the Dog said, it's still the case of there's just other units on the roster that fill a similar role but better or cheaper. So yeah, uh, not necessarily. Briema, you are Remia. Uramia. Yeah, there we go. Um, you are not quite at the end. We are on the final, but we haven't started the final, right? So this is the final series, best of five. We're still on game one, though. Yeah, so our uh, picks here. They got Even Star is going to go Zinch and Slanesh. Houseplant counters with Nurgle. Very interesting. So, oh man, Houseplant must have a build ready for this matchup. That's very interesting. I'm I'm genuinely curious to see what he has uh, to bring here. Uh, Houseplant, uh, he, I mean, he was ready with that Nurgle pick. As soon as Evenstar said Zinch and Slanesh, bam, Nurgle. And Evenstar immediately, without thinking, Zinch, right? And I guess they both know what they want to do here. Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, that is the thing that you can do. Look at that huge line of Plague Bearers, man. Five Plague Bearers. That's 50,000 HP, guys. In just those five units, that's 50,000 HP. Uh, so there's that. You've got two Cultists, three Spawns, and two Nurglings on the Zinch side. Same exact build we saw last time. Kairos in the air with an ex uh, Lord of Change. Doom Knights. Furies. Interesting. Yeah, I, I, I've I seen a lot more Nurgle since the patch, which is great. Uh, it's not exactly the same Ogre's build every single time, which is also great. So, yeah, I, I would say the patch was overall a win. There wasn't any real L's, uh, any real losses in the patch, I would say. Just the only loss in the patch was that they didn't do enough, in my opinion. They could have hit a few, like, even just, like, five more units. Like, if I think Blue Horrors, um, maybe, maybe Flesh Hounds plus 50 cost wouldn't be that big of an issue. But, like, if I had to choose, I'd probably do Flesh Hounds plus 50 cost. I'd do, like, maybe minus one ammo, like, minus... 5 or 10 HP per model on blues. Uh, I'd probably do plus 50 cost on Zinch Knights. Um, probably do like plus 50 cost on Zinch Spawns. Plus 100 cost maybe on Zinch Spawns. And then maybe like plus 100 cost for any your pistols. Anyway. Uh, spawns for Zinch, what are they for? So the spawns for Zinch uh, have a few things. Number one is all monstrous infantry count as infantry for capture weight, right? So as unbreakable monstrous infantry, they're really good at actually holding objectives because they'll never route and they'll continue to hold that full capture weight. Um, yeah, armor sundering isn't super, super applicable in this matchup, but it is something they do have access to. And also barrier, a thousand HP of barrier means that they have and almost 10,000 HP in comparison to the other variants of spawn. So they're just a lot tankier. And especially if you're cycling them in and out to uh, maintain barrier as much as possible, that is going to be quite a potent option. 
Um, even in, in matchups where you might not necessarily think, like just the general lack of anti-large for Nurgle means they're not going to take a ton of damage. Let's see here. Let's see here. Yeah, the cultists are going to be taking the brunt of the magic missiles, but this is arguably kind of fine. I mean, it would suck if he has to resummon them, but they're not that expensive of targets at the end of the day. So, uh, it, and I mean, even if they do get sniped here, it's, yeah, they can pop their, panic pop their summons real quick before they die and then just get resummoned back in for additional troops. But anyway, right now, there's just not a lot of meat of, on this initial starting army for even star which is i think what the idea is from houseplant is just just to have such a meaty army that it's like like what what is he supposed to do right now if he tries to actually fight and sustain combat this lord of change is very likely to get surrounded here and take a ton of damage the spawns are countering back on over meanwhile we've got uh, yeah more spawns making their way downtown on the low ground bifurcated kurt yes Yes, the, the two-headed terror, Kairos Fate Weaver. Look at this Nurgle force, though. Houseplant just uh, very patiently moving up. He's got so many Plague Bearers. This is just, I mean, five Plague Bearers in your starting armies. Not something I think we would have seen previously, but even that small increase to the speed of Plague Bearers certainly does help. Although, this is going to be bad. Oh, this is going to be so bad. Oh, the humanity. I mean, actually, it's not that much damage, but... It is damaged, certainly. A lot of HP. I mean, if we had to measure the amount of HP on the field, I mean, even with the barrier, still the Nurgle units are rocking more HP, I think. It just total HP on, on, on the battlefield, right? So, let's see. Zinch needs flamers in range to melt all those, all those big boys. Yes. Yeah, I, I agree, and I uh, we saw from his build before when he fought this last time, I think, did he end up even bringing out any flamers against Medley? I don't remember. Maybe he doesn't actually have any flamers here, in which case, that's a huge mistake. Definitely, you want at least two flamers in this matchup, I would say, in the... Uh... Oh, spot of Nurgle. Well, for similar reasons that you might... Uh, sorry, my cat's just, like, running into my mic stand here. Okay, you, you gotta skedaddle. Um, anyway, sorry about that. Uh, so, sorry, the, yeah, the, the Nurgle spawn, it's a similar idea, is that just that they ha are unbreakable and that they have infantry capture weight. Uh, they also have Cloud of Flies and Poison, so it's kind of just like a monstrous infantry um, that you can take to kind of layer in with your forces to give you additional mass, and uh, especially for, like, getting surrounds on light monsters. Like, the mass of Kairos and the other Big Bird is pretty low if you actually look at them, right? If we look at Kairos' mass here, 3,500 is really not a lot. So, like, if the spawn can get a surround on him, they'll be able to keep him held in place relatively well. So well, that's, that's kind of why you take the spawn is for mass, it's for capture power, it's for additional DPS, too, because they do have pretty decent weapon strength. Even if not as good as some of the other variants, it's still all right, certainly. So anyway, Nurgle forward pressing from the objectives. Man, Houseplant just came in here with an, an erect triple cap of Nurgle. Just fully blight boiled like a, a pimple ready to pop all over the place and just spew pus everywhere. It's, uh, yeah, man, this is, <laughs> I don't know if I've seen a Nurgle game like this ever. And I, I, I have to wonder for Evenstar about the build, I mean... What exactly was he expecting here? Was he expecting, like, a lot of Plague Drones? Or, I mean, I'm just not seeing the DPS from Zinch. Looks like some Forsaken are trying to break through and get back at this objective, but uh, even Star's got to get on an, an objective as soon as possible, because right now he is just hemorrhaging victory tickets to, uh, to Houseplant here, so... Yeah, it's, it's strange, because... I mean, I would think here, in this matchup, is a matchup where you take Knights of Zinch, like, on horseback. Not the Doom Knights, necessarily, but the regular Knights of Zinch. The lack of AP anti-large uh, for, for Nurgle means that they can tank out damage against most Nurgle units very well and just hold things down. They can also, also dish out some pretty serious damage, too. Uh, Flamers are another unit that I think are very much essential in this matchup, like, with 
Knights and Flamers working in, in tandem, working together. Those two units alone can kill most Nurgle armies, like... So, I just... Ah, this is a very weird build for me from Evenstar. I'm really not sure about the army choices here. I mean, it worked great in the last match, as we saw, but against this just ultra-thick, just infinite HP build from Nurgle, it's struggling pretty badly, and Kairos actually gets surrounded by the spawn. This, this right here is exactly why you take the spawn of Nurgle, or in, for any of the Warriors of Chaos, why you might want to take spawn in any matchup is to be able to lock down a flying character like that and just pound him into the dirt, or in this case, into the snow. Ah, uh, yes. I mean, it's looking looking pretty pretty grim indeed. <laughs> Houseplant's already more than halfway there. Oh, man. The Nurgle meta is real, guys. Holy cow. I have not seen a game like this from Nurgle ever, I don't think, where they are able to just flood HP onto all three objectives and just hold them in place. Again, granted, I think a lot of this is due to poor army selection on the part of Evenstar, but, I mean... This build, he locked it in immediately, so evidently he knew what he wanted to do, and a houseplant did as well. Ah, uh, guys, try, try not to feed the, uh, the obvious, obvious troll here. Anyway, these each spawn are trying to hold out, but they're just getting flooded with bodies here. More and more Nurglings, more and more Furies keep piling in. Uh, army damage value-wise, I mean... Being even with Nurgle in terms of army gold damage is losing to Nurgle. If you're if you're even close to even, or even worse, if Nurgle's ahead of you in army damage, you are losing, my friend. So right now, <laughs> this is <laughs> even being up only like you know 400, 500 points is still kind of losing to Nurgle, to be honest. So uh, even Star has got to get a good, strong counterattack push going in order to secure all three objectives at this point, and he might be able to do so uh, for Houseplant. From his perspective, he just needs to pull back and pile on one point and hold a single objective at this point in order to win. So, uh, like this force right here, being able to just protect this objective number three, like he might end up losing this objective number two. It does look like he's throwing a few more infantry models out there, a few more Forsaken Plague Bears into the center. Uh, yeah, Zinch, there's no way they're going to be able to triple cap. That was... Holy cow. I mean, that was a clinic from Houseplant. Uh, you know, you know some... It, it just seems appropriate somehow that a Houseplant would be blessed by Nurgle. It, it's a, it's a, quite a, a tall Houseplant now, and it's growing some strange-looking flowers and leaves, and it seems to be emanating a very strange smell, but a Houseplant all the same... <laughs> Blessed by Nurgle. Ah, beautiful stuff. You know, actually, way back in the day when I was a manager, I say way back in the day, like a couple years ago, three or four years ago, um, I w used to manage a restaurant, and one of the one of my employees, we her nickname was Houseplant for you know, whatever fun reasons, but <laughs> uh, houseplants are scary, guys. Don't mess with a houseplant, definitely. Uh, yeah, that was an awesome Nurgle game. I have to say, that was probably one of the best Nurgle games I've ever seen. <laughs> right? This is a great, <laughs> great contrast. Uh, and I think, you know, I, I honestly would... I, I'm curious to see how this would work in other matchups for Nurgle. Uh, just... Just... Huge... Huge amounts of HP on the... Full, on, on the... HP pools on the field. Just so much HP that you have to cut through that you... Unless you bring some insanely high DPS units, it's just going to be impossible. So, um... Yeah, absolutely, Arrow. I agree. Smaller armies create a bit more build roulettes. So you have to wait longer. Do something if your build is wrong. 100%. 100%. And, yeah, that's why I think that there's the flying synergy, but First of all, what are you protecting against, right? Not only, your, to your point, Arrow, what are you protecting it? With? Like, what are you actually protecting? What are you protecting against? Like, what is flying that Zinch can bring that scare, or that Nurgle can bring, rather, that's scary enough that you feel like you have to invest that heavily into winning the air fight? 
Are Plague Drone's Death's Heads, like, suddenly super meta and very strong? I don't know. How's Purple Sun? Uh, it's probably pretty good. I don't know if its damage profile got changed that much, other than the fix to all AoE damage spells. Skip Rot Flies, Plague Drones, Plague Toads, or Furies, right? I mean, he did have some Furies here, but uh, just a spam of Nurgle Infantry, which turned out to be the right answer. I've never seen that before, but uh, yeah, impressive. Very, very impressive. Plague Bearers just take a beating, but they do enough in terms of just holding the objectives. Kairos also being circle beaten by spawn was a huge issue as well. I mean, losing Kairos is always going to be a huge, huge problem. So, Doom Knights did okay. Blue Horrors pay for themselves. No surprises there. You know, I kind of get the spawn from, from Ninja's perspective, but I don't know if I would do that. I think probably just flip all of these spawn for Flamers, and then these Doom Knights could probably be regular Knights on the ground. Maybe take one more Knight on the ground, too, and I think all of a sudden you're set. But anyway... Yeah, Plague Tide, exactly. <laughs> Plague Tide, I love it. Uh, he did bring a Lord, he didn't bring him out, no. He had just this uh, Herald of Nurgle in reserve and never even used him, which means he never used his Winds of Magic either, which is hilarious, <laughs> but he didn't need it. He, he didn't need it. Okay, let me check now the next map. Uh, it's going to be Battle for Itza. Back to what most people would consider to be the best... Domination map now. Still here. Wait for them to get their army picks locked in. Hey! <laughs> Your amount and message will be public. Yes, Arrow. <laughs> Thanks for the fiver. Much appreciated. <laughs> I actually, I don't think I have Streamlabs set up yet on this PC. That's my apologies. There's not going to be any fun, uh, fun pop-up for you right now, but. <laughs> Zinch without magic is like gun without magazine. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, the, uh, for me, the Slanesh Chariots, single entity Slanesh Chariot as a mount especially, still interests me quite a bit. Yeah, the basic 800 cost Chariots, they're pretty good, but I think the micro, I don't know, maybe my micro is good enough. I, I need to, I need to try, try some more matchups with them. I did notice in my stream the other day that I actually unsummoned them. I thought they just, like, immediately disintegrated. But no, I actually accidentally unsummoned them, which is kind of hilarious. There we go. Like, Houseplant went Slanesh, Demons of Chaos. Let's see what even Star responds with. I think the Cathay counter to Wurt Nurgle Walking Dead build is magic. Uh, most unlikely of heroes, the Wujing War Compass. Yep, 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 yep. 100% I agree. Uh, Zhao, especially. If you take Zhao, two Alchemists, and two Compasses, and just catch cast the cheap, uh, whatever, Fire Breath, whatever, Fire Dragon Breath, whatever the spell is, that... Um, with the extra damage from the Mastery of the Elemental Winds, that spell does hilarious damage against low armor targets, which is pretty much all uh, Nurgle infantry, right? So, like, you can just rip rip apart Plague Bearers with that very efficiently, and that will pretty much do the trick for you. Um, future of Domination ladder will be determined by the addition of maps such as Battle of Itza. New maps will be essential to keep the game fresh or cause it to wither on the vine. I agree. Literally, this is, besides UI and some other kind of minor fixes, this for me that was the biggest thing for Domination to succeed. It needs more maps, which is why, I mean, again, I don't, I don't like taking credit, but I did literally send Creative Assembly a list of maps from Warhammer 1 and 2 that I thought would be good candidates for Domination. Battle of Itza and Arnheim were both on that list and are now in the game, so... <laughs> 
big hopes for a reworked Slon Gold for Domination. I could see that. There's other maps, too, that, like, visually, they're amazing, but they really, like, uh, what is it? Uh, the final quest battle for Vampire Coast. I forget the name of the map, but it's like you're underwater, right? And aesthetically, it's one of the coolest maps I've ever seen. But if they were to tweak the map a little bit to make it better for Domination, like, I don't know. I think it'd be great to have those really visually stunning, uh, incredible maps in homage to the artists who created them. You know, the, the workers at Creative Assembly who created them. We work them to be Domination maps once again. That would be amazing. Or like, uh, uh, what's another one? Actually, um, Algram Shard is another one that I actually was thinking about recently that might make a pretty decent um, addition. I would have to look at the deployment. Battle, Battle of the Eternal Tides, is that the one? That's the one. Or like the Oak of Ages, right? I know we already have Silver Aspire to kind of represent the Wood Elf map. Pillar of Bone also for the Greenskins map. I mean, there's, there's quite a bit they could do. Quite a bit they could do. <laughs> Alright, looks like we're going to have Slanesh versus Islev. Should be a good, good time. I'm stoked to see... Chariots, perhaps? Hell flares? You know, Romulan, I wouldn't hate if they, like, once we have enough domination maps where they can have a rotation of, like, let's say 15, 15 domination maps, and then maybe you have, like, Five in reserve that get rotated in or out. Black Ark, you know, actually, Black Ark is another one that I had recommended for them um, on my list of possible maps for domination. Black Ark actually is one of them, <laughs> but Fall of Man, uh, Fall of Man, it's just it's such an extreme slope. I don't know how you would make that balance unless you had both people deploy on the top of the hill, which would be kind of hilarious, but. Yeah. Yeah, Black Ark is actually one that I, I wish they would have added, but for whatever reason, they decided not to. Because that one, I mean, that has already like a three lane system, pretty much. Yeah, that's a good one. The nice thing, though, Coops, is once we get to, like, some of the new land battle maps are okay. They're they're all right. They definitely tried to do something with them. But out of the new maps, like, I haven't really played enough of the new land battle maps to tell, like, how many of them are actually good. But thankfully, once we get the integration, we'll get all the old maps back, too. And then with the new land, ma land battle maps on top of that, we'll have a huge variety for sure. Land battle maps, but... Huge map with the hill in the middle. Uh, is that what MP? Not Peak Pass. Uh, Alpine Ridge. Is that the one? I think that's the one. The Alpine Ridge. My cow's plant is ready to rock. Ready it up. Okay. Yeah, actually, even, um, yeah, Alpine Ridge, that's the one. 
there's even one free-for-all map that could be pretty decent for domination. The one that's uh, in the desert that has like the river running through the center. I forget. I forget what it, it's actually called, but that one would be pretty good. Yeah. Maybe we'll get tools to start making community maps. I certainly hope so. I know that was a thing in the past, but uh, kelp and coal dust. Which would, yeah. There was another one that's like the, it's like a weird quest battle that I don't know if I've ever fought before. It's like a thieves hideout or something like that. I mean, there's, uh, there's quite a few. The FFA High Elf city map. Yeah, it, it could be interesting. The only thing is it's not balanced. So you'd have to figure out a way to make the deployment zone so that it's reasonably well balanced. It'd be interesting though. I don't know how you would do that, but. The other MP Ridge map. Oh, Hailrot Ridge. Yeah, that's actually one of my favorite personal land battle maps. Hailrot he Ridge. Is it? Yeah, it's... No, it's Hailrot Ridge, I think. Anyway, yeah. I know which one you're talking about, and I agree, Romulan Dog. That would make an excellent domination map. Lord Croak quest battle map. Isn't that the Battle of Itza? Battle for Itza? Isn't that? Or is that? I don't remember. I thought that was this one right here. Battle for Itza. I could be wrong though. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Hello. Altar of Ultimate Darkness? Maybe. Could be an interesting one. <laughs> oh, yeah, the Blood Fountain. That one could be interesting, too. I agree. I agree. Yeah, maybe I'll have to go through and put together, like, a second list to send to them. Like, okay, now that we've had some time, and I do think the success of Battle for Itza proves that domination open, open domination maps can work very well. But, oof, look at this wide, wide build again. Okay, so... Excuse me, we've got, uh, oh, Nakai quest battle. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking this was for, uh, for Lord Croak, but maybe it's actually another battle. I think it's actually probably another battle. Is it specifically called Battle for Lord Croak or something? Galleon's Graveyard? Yes, that's the one I was thinking of, the final quest battle. Or no, Galleon's Graveyard is just a city, right? Anyway, my brain's a little fried, guys. Ah, uh, yes. Some people have said they don't like the new, like, sort of art style of World of War Warhammer 3, but personally, I love it. Like, this jungle looks even better now in this game than it did in Total War Warhammer 2, in my opinion, especially, like, the plants and the, and the greenery, you might say. Flora and fauna. All right. So anyway, big bear. Wow. Even star coming in with a big, big bear. Uh, Katarine to back him up with double patriarch again with the horse mounts. Is there something missing? Have I? Did I miss something important? Why would you not take the bears? Like why? Why would you take the horse mounts? I mean, I guess you don't need the AP against Slanesh, but the extra health really helps, guys. Anyway, we've got two heavy war sleds also, and some horse archers. So the issue for Slanesh's build here is that they've brought primarily infantry only in their starting army, and they have literally nothing 
hold back those heavy war sleds. So yeah, you can see that. Uh, <laughs> uh, Battle of the Eternal Tides. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say Galleon's Graveyard. I think is just one of the towns, but. Hmm. Battle of Eternal FBS drops. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, Houseplant just kind of pulling back for the time being, keeping all of his forces together while he tries to get something out with mass that can contest against the heavy war sleds. He loved ponies. Ah, uh, could be. And there's the summon. Hell Striders of Slanesh with their 100 speed should be able to pretty easily catch these heavy war sleds. They are going to take some fire in return. They have to be careful, though. If they get fully surrounded here, these horse archers could actually counter collapse, but it looks like even more Hell Striders being pulled out. They're going to get a hold of those uh, horse archers. They're doing a little bit of damage to the heavy war sleds. Not much, but even just forcing them off. And I don't know, I feel like even Star could have been aggressively attacking with his chariots that entire time with the sleds, and it wouldn't have cost him much at all. He could have been just hitting and running all over these infantry troops. Now, though, he manages to bring the Hellstriders back into an unfavorable, an unfavorable position, and uh, all of a sudden, it's looking a little bit rough for Slanesh right off the bat. They've gone down by about 1,000 damage value and haven't really done much in return. Yeah, interesting to not see... Uh, Maybe some heavier, well, not heavier, but more elite Slanesh cavalry. Uh, the armor piercing of Heart Seekers makes them very good for countering war sleds. If they can get a good rear charge and get a few attack animations in, do an extreme amount of damage very, very quickly. Right now, the sleds, the heavy war sleds, have so much mass that there's no hope for any single infantry in, in the game to be able to hold them back. That is going to be pretty rough. Likewise, the uh, big bear coming through as well now, since most of the Slanesh focus is sleds it's uh yeah the, the bear could be able to get some breaths out looks like it does get one breath attack out there katarine gonna use her little explosion perhaps no not quite but one of the patriarchs just gets completely killed was really really horribly horrendously killed and it looks like there's the seekers that we were looking for they come out and get a really good rear charge on those heavy war sleds look at the burst damage there from those seekers they just paid for themselves in that single charge pretty much um, doing an extreme amount of damage completely shutting down one ward sled yeah literally a single rear charge into heavy war sleds and they pay for themselves so uh, that's great to see there that is one thing i mean the, the sleds are super strong but there's one way to potentially beat them um i mean it is going to cost a full unit of seekers here the seekers will eventually end up going down but they do force the by our blood passive for those heavy war sleds so no doubt they'll be going down in a pretty big hurry very soon the herald now in combat against the snow leopard it has to be a little bit careful because of that anti-large but a nice explosion also from katarine Doing a huge amount of aoe damage to those slanesh marauders Meanwhile, though, again, Houseplant is just doing a great job controlling the objectives and the flow of the battle, keeping Evenstar on the back foot because Evenstar went with a very narrow, sort of tall, elite build, right? He just doesn't have the numbers to contest, and we're seeing again an early three cap from Houseplant. He is out for absolutely no mercy today. Uh, Houseplant just woke up and chose, you know, Venus flytrap violence. <laughs> oh man. Nice Heart of Winter, though, is going to be able to help Kislev counterattack back in here and try and seize that center objective. Still, the cultists are fighting. You can see the Herald of Slanesh keeping mostly free. Another unit of Seekers came in. They didn't do nearly as well as that first unit did. Um, there's still one more unit of the sleds online, but that's just fine. Uh, Marauders Spears holding for the time being. They can do okay against wing lancers and the like same thing hell scourge is up here we'll be able to just sit contentedly for a while army damage value house plant is still behind but not by as much only 2,000 points down which is i say only i mean that is literally the cost of the bear but <laughs> certainly not insurmountable for slanesh he's just got to do his best to try and hold at this point uh this big messy brawl in the center is going okay for Kislev. The fact that the bear is involved is definitely helping, and a lot of the Slanesh units are quite light. They're starting to run out of steam. Routing, coming back from route. 
But uh, these Hell Striders here, they pull up. I'm not really sure exactly what their target is. They're trying to go after here, but we do see some summon demonettes as well. And uh, uh, cavalry just riding through, caused by dervishes, winged lancers. The shock damage of those cavalry will be pretty effective, but they have to be careful as they get closer and closer to the Slanesh lines. They're going to see more spears and some other units potentially, so more uh, Hell Striders once they come back and are able to be resummoned. Probably see them come quickly as sort of a counter-attacking force here. So they got to be careful. The demonets summoned. The demonets getting in here, just racking up the value against these Kossars. Uh oh. The stream frozen? Hang on. It's looking fine on my end. Uh. Yeah, everything is fine on my end. I don't see any issues reported on OBS. I don't see any issues reported on YouTube side. Uh, try refreshing and see if that fixes it for you. I also am not... Uh, yeah, that is very unfortunate because this is an awesome battle. I might have to go back and cast this one separately, but... Let's see here if refreshing will help. Nope. Okay, let me, uh, let me restart the stream. Okay, there we go. For whatever reason, OBS decided that it needed to be restarted. So, just in time for the counterattack of Even Star as Kislev tries to make their presence felt here. You can see they pushed up, they captured the center objective. They're pushing all the way through to Slanesh's deployment zone. That being said, they're not really concentrating super hard. Uh, Even Star's not really concentrating hard enough on quickly side capping or, or capping these two side objectives as well. Um, it's very, very critical that these side objectives do be captured as quickly as possible uh, because the victory tickets are going to keep increasing. Uh, looks like one unit of Cosify Dervishes does counterattack back and get to this objective number two, but Even Star actually does have to fully three cap at least for a small amount of time in order to win this. So for Houseplant, he just needs to hold on to this objective number three for as long as possible. Um, to continue to rack up those points and if he can hold that single objective he should be able to win uh, he's getting plenty of supplies still as well we can see the supplies ticking up there more uh, hell striders being called in here trying to help those hell scourge marauders holding out on this objective continue to do so more seekers coming out the elemental bear still completely healthy there's not really much option for slanesh to try and finish him off at this point but uh, pretty strong force here. I mean, granted, those health striders can die in a big hurry. But at the very least, they could try and come through, perhaps get a charge on those heavy war sleds. Just keep holding this objective as the number one priority. Um, if you can find a, an avenue to maybe come in and sneak these other objectives away, that would be pretty solid. But for the time being, just all in on defending that objective should be the number one priority here. Let's see. More sleds being used Heavy sleds, having been resummoned from their earlier defeat, now can move in and just start to wreck shop. That being said, a couple sled models, one sled model at least, two actually, yeah, from this unit have been destroyed. So it's a big final push at this point. Uh, Herald of Slanesh trying to get away from the Snow Leopard. Snow Leopard is actually fast enough to catch the Herald of Slanesh, especially with Frostbite and with the uh, difference in Vigor. That should be a pretty easy catch there, and she will likely go down, so maybe it'd be worth just de-summon there if you can, um, if you're able to get the opportunity to. But, Slanesh being broken. This is where Evenstar could come in and perhaps finally achieve a three cap. Uh, the Osar is just holding very firm. Sleds making the world of difference. Even just two heavy war sleds is enough at the end of the day to completely, completely just win the fight, you know? Uh, and uh, Hellstriders charging into infantry, not really the best target for them to go after Kossars, but just trying to maintain capture weight as much as possible. Um, at this point, maybe he could try and sneak some units into the center objective. Uh, Houseplant could, but it looks like Evenstar manages to finally capitalize on his army damage value advantage and take the lead looks like houseplant is going to throw in the towel there so yeah 
a uh, a great great game to both players the the chariots although the the seekers were a pretty good counter at points the chariots at the end of the day just ended up being a little bit too much big bear likewise also doesn't quite pay for itself in terms of damage but distraction bear effect is very very real so um fantastic fantastic stuff really really good game to both players and while they get their next picks locked in we'll look through the damage values one more time real quick for the reserves as well yeah the seekers man the seekers are definitely an answer for the chariots it's just uh i think some of the other engagements maybe didn't play out exactly how houseplant would have wanted wing lancers get some really good value armored costars trade pretty decently as well so not bad at all not bad at all let's go ahead and get the next map locked in we've got a 1-1 series folks so strap yourselves in we are having a grand old time let me just do here and map next next map is arnhem or arnheim i'm gonna go grab a drink of water one more time guys i'll be right back All right, players are now looking at their army picks. Yes, this looks like even star is going to go chaos, or at least he's thinking about it. Is thinking about it. Let's see. Ogres and Slanesh, actually. Okay. Thing. I mean, that's uh, two very, very strong factions. So. Oh, even stars, ogres are nasty. That's good to take that in the number three, the ace match, right? The critical, not ace match necessarily, but it's a critical match, right? Because go down to one here. I guess it's not the biggest issue in the world, but. If you can go up to one here, it's definitely a nice. Puts you in a position to get your ace match right and try and finish it in the next one. Game three is always very critical in the best of five series, the best of seven series. You could argue more so like game four, game five is where it starts to get critical. Let's see here. Ah, Houseplant goes Demons of Chaos. Nice. Guess I should probably not be looking at his army. Interesting. Will we see some Bellicor? Will we see the uh, Bespoke Princes? There's no character loading allowed, so you can't load up your own you know, campaign OP Demon Prince with max level items. That's... 
going guys so hopefully you all are are having a good weekend so far here in the uh, beautiful salt lake city springtime is in full effect um uh, yeah it's even been pretty warm the past few days so theme park's going to start opening up here within the next few weeks it's spring break for a lot of people here right now so there's a lot of people traveling also yeah uh it's a great time to be alive guys i'm well, hopefully you guys are enjoying as well. Uh, Demons of Chaos are banned in most tournaments and on a uh, ladder. Um, but in this tournament specifically, I allow Demons of Chaos under some special restrictions. Let's see here. Heading ready up on my end. Ready, they can load on in. Typical Colorado Spring. Oh, yeah. Yeah, same thing for you, Wicked. It's uh, it's beautiful this time of year. I, I Spring spring and fall are the best for sure. Temperate areas. Yeah, I, I agree, Wicked. They aren't really unbalanced. They're just very... They just... They have a lot of variety, which... You know, uh, like, especially if you compare them to the game one, game two factions, they're probably like much more balanced, actually, than the mono god factions, just because of the lack of units on the mono god factions right now. But we'll see, Great Book of Grudges. I don't know what they plan to do. If, if Warriors of Chaos may t er, end up turning into, I hope not, because otherwise, like, where are you going to use Archeon? You know, obviously Sigvald can go to Slanesh, but like Archeon and Kolek, where are they going to go? Um, so I, I hope personally that they keep Demons of Chaos playable in ranked domination, and I'll still allow them in all my tournaments as well. They end up doing some restrictions if they end up getting some of the God-specific units on the Warriors of Chaos roster, kind of like how the Demons of Chaos have the God-specific But I don't know, we'll see. We'll see. I, it just depends, Sippy, on... on Because, like, right now in campaign, you have the undivided factions that don't have access to any of the god-specific stuff. They're their own distinct factions, right? So, um, it just depends. Like, if they end up getting a lot of the god-specific stuff, they will need restrictions. If they stay pretty much how they are right now, just with more undivided stuff, um, that would be fine. Like, if they give them, like, Fury... I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe they only give them Warriors units. I, it's hard to say. Lose air battle because your furies are worse than monogod chaos factions. It's true. They're slightly cheaper, but <clears throat> yes. Uh, I don't know, Jerry. I think probably Bellacor will become a playable, like, legendary starting lord for Demons of Chaos. Um, but I don't know. I don't know exactly how they're going to do <coughs> <laughs> the Demons of Chaos faction in immortal empires that's a good question good good question like even star decided to lock in on ogres so ogres versus deep chaos i don't know if i've actually played this myself in field domination game i've played like some 2v2 some team games and stuff but nothing in a direct um sort of matchup here If I had to guess, Sippy, I'd guess um, Slanesh will get Sigvald. Sigvald may actually be one of the only legendary lords to be on multiple rosters for multiplayer. if Because I could see him staying with Warriors and I could see him going to Slanesh. It's possible they could do both. And maybe in campaign you'd have like a choice presented to you early on. Like join with Archeon or join with the other Slanesh. I'm not sure. 
But uh, Archeon and Kolek, I think, will stay with the Warriors of Chaos Undivided. I mean, I mean, Archeon at the very least has to stay because that's like his jam, right? So. Um. Yeah. Yeah, Galtrick and Felix, exactly. Uh, I. I don't think there will be mono. I think. Uh, so. Durema asks if I think there will be monogod mortal centric factions. I think there will be monogod factions led by mortals, yes. But kind of like how, like, we're already right now, the corn roster is mixed warriors of chaos and demons, right? Same thing with Slanesh. You've got the marauders and you've got the demons. So they're all re the rosters are already kind of mixed. Mortals and demons. I expect we'll get more of both. More mortals and perhaps more demons as well on all of those rosters. So I think what we'll get is we'll definitely get a more lord leading the monogod faction. So like each monogod will get like Valkia for corn and etc. Um, but I don't think we'll have like a warriors of corn only faction, if that makes sense, right? Yeah, old chaos needs the other demon faction lures. I agree. They need a uh, slash Nurgle and Zinch lores 100% improve the marks of chaos system so that they are a little bit better. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what they end up doing. For now, we're on to game three here on Arnheim. Let's take a look. As the elves, you can imagine like some elf, high elven uh, spectators just lining the walls here, ready to spectate this battle. Maybe a master of ceremonies, like, standing out in the front of the street right here. But let's see what they have brought. So, for Demons of Chaos, Bellicor once again, not surprised. He's very, very strong. Uh, I've got a front line. I think this is basically the same. Front line of Plague Bears, second line of some pinks and blues. Three pinks, uh, sorry, two pinks, three blues. And that's it for the starting army for the Ogre Kingdoms. Again, similar to what we saw last time. Double Stone, Horn, Hunter, Slaughter, Master, Knoblars. We've got actually Maneater Pistols this time. Some Bulls and some more Bulls. Lead Belchers. Interesting. Very, very interesting. So here comes Bellacor. See the Slaughter Master very uh, tactically hiding behind this cliff face. Let's see. Bellacor, I would imagine, same loadout as before. Yeah, and Feebling Foe and Pit of Shades. Got some Flamers out instantly. They're going to maneuver up into the woods here. And just the threat of the Flamers will weigh on even Star's mind. Even if he can't get at them and start shooting them right away, the Lead Belchers will be able to counteract them somewhat. But let's see. Let's see if Demon Chaos can kill the two hunters. Ooh, oh. Great, guys. <laughs> Why is Hyde the Slaughter Master? I think it's just to send a message, probably. Hmm. Valkia will be 100% first DLC. I, I, I think Valkia will be a pretty early. Because right now... I mean, there's Slanesh, which is sort of all over the place, but there's not, uh, like, an explicitly female Chaos Lord currently in the game. So, um... Yes. Anyway. Stonehorns. See the, uh... Lead Belters open up. One volley just barely breaks. Not even breaks the barrier of those pink horrors, which is just insane. Absolutely insane. You can see the horrors pull up on station. They're a little bit out of range of the Lead Belters. If all the horrors unleashed, like, one volley altogether on the Lead Belters, that would probably be enough to kill them. But let's see. Flamers are going to have to flee away and, and stay away from those ogre bulls. 
But uh, stone horns are coming in. They're taking some damage from the fire, but again, that missile resistance will be insane. Here he's coming through. They're gonna use their damage to try and go after these lead belters, but even Star Cannon immediately respond with those ogre, ogre bulls. Nice little bombardment attack from the hunter there. The other hunter getting hit by the flamers. They even, even the flamers, because of the attack animations of the hunter too, they actually don't end up getting that many hits. But here now, Bellicor drops in. He might take some friendly fire as well. The hunter, man, just staying mostly away from the flamer fire at this point. Uh, is starting to take some damage though, and the leadership very, very quickly drops. Maybe Bellicor could just route this hunter straight up and chase him off the battlefield. That would be amazing. For the demons, Plague Bears up here going after those Iron Fist Ogre Bulls. It should be okay for the Plague Bears, I think. We'll have to check back in that in just a minute and see. But the Hunters are still holding out just fine. As long as the Flamers can stay safe and keep shooting, that will be victory probably for the Demons of Chaos, but we'll see. Uh, Plague Bears trading decently well against the Ogre Bulls there. Bellicor once again trying his best to get at these freaking stone horns and just fight them in melee, but he's having a little bit of a tough time of it. Uh, the lead belchers are pouring in fire on the blue horrors and pink horrors, still mostly just ignoring the plague bears at this point. But here come the seekers. Ooh, this is a nice rear charge here. If they can get a full surround. Ooh, look at the DPS. Look at the DPS, man. On a single entity from a unit of cavalry. That little rear charge right there. That was a huge, huge little damage spike. I mean, not super huge, but considering it was probably like a couple thousand damage in just a couple seconds. That is pretty impressive. The other Stonehorn also going to go down to Bellicor here, it looks like. Um, oh, man. This is pretty good from, uh, from Houseplant so far. He is... Not quite ahead on da army damage value, but if he can finish off the stone horns, that would be amazing. He's also completely wrecked that one ogre bull that overextended a little bit earlier. Um, could use now these flesh hounds and other units to follow up and go after those man eaters with pistols. Would be a great use of said funds. The seekers, man, they came in here and probably paid for themselves already, just about. I never see this. It ceases to amaze me. Um, with the Seekers, how easily they're able to pay for themselves if they get us around. Even, like, single entity damage isn't something that most cavalry is known for. Like, in the in the history of Total War Warhammer, generally, monsters trade well into cavalry, like, just as a general rule. Of course, there's exceptions to that, but Seekers are anti-everything. And the fact that they get a lot of bonus from Devastating Flanker if they get us around on a single entity means they are especially adept at that specific task. But uh, even Star's almost got a three cap here. He's got to be a little bit careful. Houseplant is back even and now pulling ahead on army damage value. Up here, he's got these flesh hounds that are just tying up a whole bunch of units. But as Bellicorn moves through, he's able to finish one stone horn off completely. The other stone horn is not long for this world. So uh, yeah, as long as he can get the capture weight on to uh, get the caps back quickly enough, he should be able to come back in this game. Houseplant did have an early initial cap, but right now neither player is able to uh, get this side objective here, this objective number two, objective number one straight in the center. Also subject to a lot of fighting. The slaughter master is gonna go down, so there's no more healing for the stone horns. That is absolutely massive. Ogres were definitely relying on them quite a bit. So, uh, yeah, Blue Horrors get in there. Blue Horrors get in there. You've used all your ammunition at this point, so you just need to get on the point and start to capture. Same thing over here. Even Star could perhaps just try and forward defend and keep, you know, maneuvering units out here to tie up, like, the pinks and the blues and whatever else uh, Houseplant is going to use to actually capture, which... I mean, he's still got plenty of time, but Houseplant definitely does need to get the captures going as soon as possible. It's a little bit tricky. He's not far enough ahead on army damage value yet to really take a decisive advantage. But, oh man, Bellicor, things turned around a little bit on him with that uh, that hunter in that engagement right there. Let's see. Bellicor is now going to get a rear charge into these bulls, try and tear out both units, which he is able to do very efficiently. That's going to open up the flamers to now fire into the Stonehorn once again. Uh, nice rear shots here from these blues. Very cost-effective into the Iron Fist. The Knobloch Trappers also pull up on station. They're going to throw in their little daggers, but <clears throat> the DPS from the blues is much, much better. Time is starting to run out a little bit, though. Pit of Shades from Bellacor as he terrifies away some more uh, Ogre troops. 
problem is just that uh, Houseplant just can't amass enough capture weight onto the objectives right now. And even though he is starting to win the battle, just not quite enough. The Ogre's just too, too thick at this point. Hmm, yeah. More Flamer Fire coming through. Boys is starting to give out a little bit, guys, so I apologize, but that's okay. Out of practice on doing these long live streams. It's been too long since I've done one, but look at this. Look at this. A couple of Nurgle units up on the high ground are going to be able to move in and secure that objective with basically no... Uh, no contestation from the Ogre Kingdoms. It does look like the Hunter was able to get healed back up, so the Slaughtermaster must have come back at least momentarily. Yeah, it looks like he is hiding fully in the back there. You could almost just de-summon the Slaughtermaster perhaps at this point, but uh, Pink's moving up, trying to get onto the objective to start capturing. Uh, this, thankfully for uh, the Demons of Chaos, for Bellacor's forces here, this side objective hasn't managed to be capped. Um, there just hasn't been the capture wave from either player to cap, which is working because even Star isn't able to pull too far ahead. Although he is, again, now slightly ahead on army damage value. Bellacor's struggling a little bit without support and with how uh, tired he is. He is struggling a bit to actually finish off the second stone horn. So, yeah, rough stuff for the Demons of Chaos. It was looking very good initially. All of a sudden, things are starting to actually fall apart a little bit. Man... Nice back and forth here, but uh, that top ground objective will finally be capped. The Seekers, oh, that is a nuclear dismember right there. Uh, just to completely nerf the speed of those Seekers, allow them to take tons of missile fire and not let them get into a position to support Bellacor here in this fight. Oh no, did he actually pull those troops out of... Oh no, don't, 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 no, oh, you gotta capture, you gotta capture the objective, there we go, okay, he did actually cap the objective, it looks like, uh, more horrors moving in on the center, uh, Seekers get a little bit of a side charge into those man-eater pistols there, it looks like they're not gonna actually, oh no, they do get some damage, it wasn't a crazy amount of damage initially, but, this is pretty good also, Flesh Hounds now, Enfeebling Foe on that Hunter, he's down to only 8 melee defense, taking a lot of rear hits from those Flesh Hounds and Plague Bears, uh, bombardment being dropped for... Oh, man. Oh, those Seekers better run, honestly. Oh, the Seekers. Oh, the Seekers friendly fire. That's painful. That is very, very painful. That's a lot of damage on a very expensive... Ah, uh, they're not that expensive, but they're expensive enough that you don't really want to be throwing them away necessarily like that. Uh, Houseplants definitely got to get a three cap going as soon as possible, but I don't, don't think he has enough weight to be able to do so. He's probably going to be able to get the two cap at least on this center objective, but I just don't see him having enough resources to swing out here. Maybe these Flesh Hounds could detach and just go back and try and solo cap that, or at least pull some of those Ogre Forces away from these other objectives, but he does need to get a three cap. He's got some time to do it. It's not completely hopeless yet, but it's looking a little bit tricky. Uh... One thing, though, even Star is consolidating his forces a little bit here. A lot of things are starting to rout, and a lot of things are shattered. And any unit that's shattered, the time that it takes to rout off the battlefield and then heal back up is all time that even Star can't actually use those units for anything. So at this point, Houseplant really needs to push his advantage, go over and try and three cap, get all of the objectives secured, and hold down the fort um, if he can. That being said, I mean, House uh, Even Star is definitely gonna do his best to try and punch back and get back at some of these other objectives. Recap, especially up on the high ground there. Um, yeah, there's not really a lot of mobility with the Stevens of Chaos army to try and go and stop this. So, I just don't see how Houseplant's going to be able to come back and win this one. Without wins a magic item for Nurgle Demon, might be better to just spam breath and trigger passive healing over fleshy abundance. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Hard to say, but... Okay. Yep, looks like he's going for that other side objective cap, but even Star did a, did a really nice job just quick switching that's one advantage of ogres is as an army on the whole they're pretty fast so a quick switch onto the other objective over here and even star is able to hold down the fort and probably seal this game i just don't see the three cap from belly cores uh oh maybe i don't know maybe that's a lot of horrors all of a sudden piling in on objective number three all these units just forcing through. We've got Nurglings coming in as well. Just maximum capture weight from Houseplant at this point. Look at this push. 
Look at this massive, massive, massive push. He is doing his absolute darndest to try and make sure he gets the full three cap. I just don't know if it's going to be enough in time. Let's see. Capture weight is ticking up in favor of the Demons of Chaos. But all the Nurglings are not able to get on the objective. I don't think it's going to be enough. Oh, it's going to be so close, guys. He's definitely got this one locked down, no question. Ogres are counterattacking into the center to try and recapture that, though. So there's threats all over the field. Oh, he is going to get the three cap just barely in time. I mean, I say barely in time with a few seconds to spare, actually. But now he has to get back down to the center objective and clear out those ogres immediately. What a game, guys. Crazy back and forth right now. Uh, yeah, you can see the Nurglings immediately detach and start to maneuver there. Bellacor also trying to get away, but he's stuck to an ogre belly. Oh no, oh no. It was looking so promising, but that center objective, the forces left to held are just too light, not enough weight. Oh, here's here's a sneak though, a sneaky, sneaky play possible. If Bellacor can pull all of these units off of the capture zone, but no, it looks like, oh, I'm not sure about that. Uh... Oh, did he cast Pit of Shades on himself? I don't understand what just happened right there. That was very confusing. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think Houseplant can hold on to the three cap. Unfortunately, yeah, I don't think he can wrest the center objective back in time. There's pinks, there's blues maneuvering in. He does have time though. He definitely does have time at this point uh, to try try and hold on to things. But there's just so many ogre units. Terror is very real. If you can get rid of a lot of the Noblars, get rid of some of the other units, he will start getting a little bit of capture weight on the zone. A couple of Nurglings piling in, another Nurgling piling in over there. More pinks coming in. Oh, it's going to be close. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. High level Pit of Shades, like Galaxy Brain Pit of Shades right there. I have no idea what that was. But anyway, Seekers are moving in. Speed of the Seekers, will it be enough? Oh, it's close. I don't think, unfortunately, the Demons of Chaos are going to have enough capture weight. But let's see. Oh, it's it's a brutal scrap right now. Just absolutely madhouse in the center. Trying to rack up as many kills as you can. Trying to get rid of those units, but it's just not enough. The capture weight will not budge. The two cap turning into the three cap. Just not getting done. And it looks like even Star will be able to hold on for the win. Not quite there yet, but it's looking ever more likely by the second. Just not enough bodies on this center objective to wrest it away from all the thick ogre bellies. Uh, Bellacor goes down to some nasty man-eater pistol fire, and that's going to spell doom for the Demons of Chaos. What a game, though. Great back and forth. Awesome job to both players. Wow. Just, just... Wow, <laughs> that was amazing. Crazy, crazy game. Um, yeah, I almost wonder if Houseplant had just left like one more of, or two more of those Nurglings down there on that lower ground objective. Perhaps that would have been enough to hold on for the three cap win. It would have been tricky, though. He definitely would have had to, to hold out after that time. There would have been continuous threats, obviously, from Evenstar. But what a game, guys. GG. Great game indeed. Man, fantastic. A lot of units paying for themselves, even on multiple summons. Zone horns were managed pretty well, I have to say. The combination of the shooting and the armor piercing of the sneakers. If anyone has the tools to take out stone horns reliably, it's definitely Demons of Chaos. But, uh, man, what a game. Dual weapons trading really well, also. Iron fists, regular bowls, all of them probably could use cost increase but that's okay great yeah great game to both players honestly that was insane so now we go to mountains of morn i need one more drink of water this is getting more and more intense folks ace match for even star if he wins here he goes home with the championship victory for the south sea open number one Houseplant can try and even up the series here with the win himself, so bear with me guys, I'll be right back.
Oh, here it comes. The man need a da 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 What a song. She'll chew you up. Whoa, here she comes. Da da da. She's a man eater. Is that is that the song you're referring to? <clears throat> yeah, man eaters definitely need a nerf. I think cost increase and melee defense nerf would probably be both in order. Like maybe plus fifty, plus a hundred cost. Yeah, like minus five melee defense sounds about right. Yeah, Houseplant does still have ogres and zinch. That is correct. He hasn't played either of those yet. And he's actually going Zinch Corn for his two. Means even Star now gets to bond with his own pick. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> Okay. I hope we see some corn, honestly. Uh, corn, Zinch, both very good in their own ways. Like, even Star might go corn. Looking at their roster, thinking about it. Maybe even Star will go demons, actually. He, he has the option to play demons of chaos as well at this point. I don't know if he has a lot of experience playing demons of chaos, but can be a tricky one. Honestly, demons are pretty well balanced. Like, they're very strong just because of the variety of units they have access to. But if you don't know what you're doing with demons, you can kind of just end up, like, taking a bunch of random stuff and not doing very well because it doesn't synergize. Or, like, you don't have the right uh, idea of what you want to do with your build, right? So, it's, uh, it's an interesting one. I think Demons of Chaos do require a little bit of experience to know what to do. I mean, yes, you can just spam the strong units, take four flesh hounds, take a couple of flamers, take four blue, you know, do that. But I think there's more to it than that. Boring bear chariots. Yep. Indeed. We didn't, we didn't see any Gore Beasts, we didn't see any Slash Chariots, at least not yet. Possible we still could. Alright, so it's going to be Demons of Chaos versus Inch. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, yeah, Demons have a lot, a lot of options here. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Like some Nurgle units, horn units for your front lines, there's Lanesh flankers. Like, yeah, like blues, flamer, thing. And for some extra bodies, of course, the being cheap infantry. Uh, maybe a couple of. And Z. A couple of Slanesh Cavalry, uh, like four Flesh Hounds, three Furies. Um, I might actually take... Plague Bears are interesting because they'll hold up fairly well, but they will get shot up badly. So, I don't know. Think about it. <laughs> Just all the greater demons. <laughs> Hyros, Bloodthirster, Bellacor, Demon Prince. That sounds terrible. <laughs> uh, yeah, personally, I love the War Sleds, like, aesthetically. Like, they, you can go watch my live reaction from last year of the Kislev trailer, and you'll see my legit live reaction to their sleds, which is that they're awesome. Unfortunately, they're insanely overpowered, so it makes them kind of boring because you see them in literally every single game, and even against the Ogre King faction, which is, you know, chariots should not be good against them. 
but uh, War Slits still kind of are good against them. Like, Yprilla still probably want to take actually one or two, but the sad thing is, with the update, the Islev Cavalry also got substantially better as well, but just no one's using them because the sleds are so good, you know? Which is a bit sad. No horse sleds. Oh, yeah, the light war sleds honestly probably should have had horses pulling them. And had non-AP with anti-infantry damage. And then the heavy war sleds should have had bears. In my opinion. <clears throat> like, then you could have had the, the light war sleds you know, maintain their, like, 800, 900 costs, right? I don't know. Went to loading board with the bears, maybe. Yo. Hmm. Oh, they definitely see use. Like, you'll see winged lancers in support of the sleds. Like, if you go back, there was one Kislev game in the final. Uh, even Star had a really good game, Kislev, which part of it got frozen out. But anyway. Um... Yeah, it's... Uh... The, the cavalry in support of the sleds is definitely a very real thing. Yeah, uh, Griffin Legion, totally. The dervishes are the best light cavalry we've ever seen because of this Kislev passive. Like, a uh, light cavalry that will become unbreakable when it starts wavering, that you can solo them to a back line like nothing else. And even if your opponent responds and shuts them down... They're going to keep fighting for a while, and they're probably still going to shut down and, like, possibly even kill an artillery crew or something, right? So, um, Ossify Dervishes are so good. So good for what they are. Oh. Ready up on my end here. Yep, exactly, Coops. If you can, if you can dislodge a Cathayan cannon crew, it's almost impossible for them to get back on. Hilarious. Very frustrating for the Cathayan player, obviously. And it's definitely a bug that needs to be fixed. But for the time being, even in the future, I mean, still just the ability to shut down. They stay shutting down. Good. Yeah, I think it's kind of funny. We have, like, oh, Kossavite Dervishes, like, cool name, and then you have Horse Archers. Meh. <laughs> you know, like, meh. <laughs> they should be called Kossavite Archers, or Kossavite Rangers, or, you know, I don't know. Not, not just Horse Archers. What a creative name. I wonder what they are. Oh, are they, are they mounted... Cavalry archers? No way. Like like horsemen with bows. <laughs> Ungol horse archers. Yeah. Step archers. Yep. I mean Anything like that would be more descriptive than... I mean, maybe not more descriptive. The name they have right now is perfectly descriptive. In fact, it is, like, a, almost scientifically descriptive. <laughs> Dervishes with bows. <laughs> I mean, that is literally what they are. If you look at their stat line, it's almost the same as the melee variant, which is hilarious. They're, uh, they're almost like better Illyrian Reavers in my mind now. 
I don't know. What do you guys think? Are Leary? They are more expensive. They have slightly better melee stats. But I think Cost of Eye Dervishes, because of the buy our blood passive and because of the fact that they are like slightly cheaper, I think Dervishes are a bit better. But let me know what you guys think. South Seasoning Company. <laughs> oh, Wicked. That's an amazing idea. I love that. So the South Seasoning Company. Our tagline will be, the spice must flow. Right? <laughs> Okay, even Star is still considering his army picks, very patiently getting his uh, stuff together here, which is totally fine. Whoops, accidentally looked at it, but yeah, you know what? Actually, out of curiosity, you can look at the bracket again while I look at his army. Hmm. Hmm. You know what's funny? Something funny that I noticed is that even though they buffed, like, pretty much all of the Demon Prince body parts, the pre-made Demon Princes, I don't think, got any buffs. I think their stats are actually still the same, even though they're made of those parts, right? At least supposedly. But, uh, I thought that was kind of funny. Looks like they're ready to rumble, so let's get switched on over. Looks like it's going to be a Herald of Zinch versus Grand Vomitus. No Bellicor. Instead, we've got the Nurgle Boy, which is okay. The one thing about Bellicor is that he has over 10,000 HP base, which is much more than any of the Demon Prince variants. Like this... Nurgle Demon Prince does have a pretty good amount of HP, too. We'll have to look. I think he has like 9,800, something in that area. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's higher. But uh, he does have the capacity to heal himself, of course. Has lore of Nurgle. But in my opinion, it's better to just have the higher base HP of Bellicor. Bellicor has another form of self-healing as well, which is like kind of weird and situational, but it's okay. And then, yeah, obviously you can... Uh, Heal him also with the Fecundity Army ability. You can also take just the Nurgle Footcaster in reserve if you want. But, uh, yeah, Grand Vomitus. Let's see what he's rocking here. So, yeah, 9,500 9, HP. I was going to say, I think it's less than 10,000. So, in, in some people's mind, I mean, with Healing Cap, yes, you can go a lot above that. But uh, considering his stats are just way lower, like, he has Anti-Infantry, yes, but just pretty low... Overall weapon damage, like good AP, but kind of mess stats and armor and charge. It's really not that great. Um, <clears throat> he does have this, which I guess will give him a big burst of self-healing too if he gets close to dying. But I don't know. I guess I'm just am a fan of Bellacor in general. I think he's very, very strong. And probably the best pick for Demons of Chaos in most matchups. But let's see how the Nurgle Lord can do. He's also got some Plague Toads here. Blue Horrors, Blood Letters, Pink Horrors. Blue whores in the center, I would imagine. Yep, and some more blood letters, toads, pink whores, blue whores, nurglings out on that side. Four house plants here coming in with the Herald of Zinch up on the disc mount. Two blue whores, two forsaken, and a cultist. Got his fancy stick out. What a run, man. That is quite the forward lean. Got going on there. A couple more Forsaken here. Blue Horrors, Pink Horrors, and another Forsaken over on the extreme right flank. Looking pretty good. Reich's Guard should have the Buy Our Blood trait. Uh, maybe. That'd be cool. 
Grand Vomitus is one of the demon princes in multiplayer, yes. He is one of the... It's like a, a selection of parts that you can have from the Nurgle line. Uh, and I don't know if it'll explicitly give you this abilities and stats line, but yes. He is a, he is a Nurgle demon prince. Ah, uh, yes, more spawns being brought out here. Right now, both players just kind of sizing each other up, not really making too many moves. Mr. Bubos is moving over. He's not going to try and go after the Herald directly, which is an interesting play, but it looks like we got some Slanesh Chariots just for you, Great Book of Grudges. Even Star finally is going to make it happen. Bring out some Secret Chariots here. Huzzah! Cheer for the Demons of Chaos. Anyway. Palmatist for president. Hmm, <laughs> looks like even Star is starting to get a little bit of uh, dots. Some of those are going to get hit by the trees and not do too much damage, but it does look like they were able to break the barrier. Nice. A uh, little uh, magic missile there. Here come the Slash Chariots. Wow, they managed to just punch straight through, but one model already went down. Look at the HP damage there. That was pretty extreme. I guess that was probably the one that got hit by all the magic missiles from Harold there. But uh, Harold's got to be careful. Right now, he's using up his ammunition and his spells on relatively low tier targets, which is, you know, he is taking care of them, but same time maybe needs to preserve those resources for something else looks like we're gonna have a cascading fire cloak no flaming sort of ruin uh, in here to buff up these forsaken of siege they already had magic damage but they now get fire damage and a damage spike from that a higher overall weapon damage as well from that buff so pretty good stuff there meanwhile in the center back to reality Snapping back over here, Herald of Zinch running away from Grand Vomitus, but getting some spiteful shots back into the face. Right now, the trade is definitely going in Houseplant's favor, interestingly enough. I guess probably just from this side over here, where he's able to collapse a number of Slanesh cavalry. Uh, those Seekers, that's like 2,000 points worth of Seekers off the bat that's been taken care of, which is pretty nasty. It's Forsaken are keeping all this Nurgle stuff bottled up in this choke, so that he's not able to get out and get at this objective. That being said, Houseplant is not currently capping any of the objectives, which is a big problem. He's got this one Forsaken running out here to massacre those Nurglings. Try and seize that objective. And while he is holding off of this objective right here, he doesn't have anything on there to actually capture it. So he's got to get, yeah, get some Forsaken, get something back there onto the actual point itself. Get some capture weight, try and not get too far behind. But right now, neither player has actually been able to capture either of these objectives. Those Nurglings, I thought for sure had this, but they just barely didn't cap it. Forsaken come back in, and they will definitely be able to seize that objective there. Finally, some uh, like some units corner kind of touches the edge of one guy, like gets thrown into the <laughs> into the objective and starts capturing it. Oh, that's great. <clears throat> Anyway. Anyway, in the center, it does look like Zinch was able to eventually capture, but they're starting to run out of steam a little bit. But, oh, man, look at this. This is what I'm talking about. Vomitus is just... I mean, he's really just not that impressive of a specimen, if I'm being honest. He's now surrounded fully by spawn. We're going to be sundering his armor. He's got hit by warp fire. Also is going to be sundering his armor. So he'll potentially go down to only 20 armor here, which is a big, big, big problem. Gonna be taking a lot of extra damage from those Forsaken in particular. Um, and spawn two, obviously. But then here come also some Seekers. They're gonna get a frontal charge into Forsaken. I mean, they'll definitely do some damage in this situation, but they're also gonna take some pretty extreme damage in return. Once that charge bonus wears off, we'll see. The Forsaken might just get fully massacred too quickly before they can really do anything to counteract this. So pretty good play there. But uh, at the same time, this area over here the fight has been lost pretty decisively a lot of units went down for house or sorry for even star although house plant uh did lose quite a bit as well just able to keep keep a huge amount of resources bottled up right there vomitus also comes over he's gonna try and salvage this situation here some furies zine's furies came in to finish the seekers which does mean the forsaken survive although they do rout another magic missile coming in from the herald Staying focused on sniping 
the uh, Vomitus at this point, which is definitely the right call. Looks like the Furies are going to come try and lock him in, allow that Sky Bombardment to come hit. It does not hit. That is unfortunate. Fleshy Abundance also been popped on Grand Bomby. So he's going to be healed back up to full strength. But Zinch right now, a huge lead on army damage value. Uh, Houseplant coming in here and just verminating all of the Demons of Chaos. Every undivided bow. See the traitorous blue and pink horrors here defying the will of the Herald by joining in with Grand Vomitus are going to somewhat pay the price, although it looks like they're actually punching back situationally right here quite well. The blood letters are definitely paying the price, but there you go. Forsaken of Zinch, very, very strong with the barrier still active, taking no damage. That's a, uh, yeah, I mean, that's a quick three cap, and I don't know if even Star, I mean, he's 5,000 damage value behind at this point, so. <laughs> yeah, he's 5,000 gold damage value behind. And uh, Vami is about to go down some clutch Screamers. Screamers are one of those units that situationally can be very good and pay for themselves quite quickly, but they're a little bit squishy and hard to use. Um, but that should be enough. I mean, especially with the spawn now piling in, Vami is taking another magic missile in the face. He is taking a surprisingly low amount of damage, all things considered. I guess that Cloud of Flies buffing him up to 64 melee defense, which for a flying monstrous lord is quite a bit, I have to admit. But yeah, that, uh, I mean, it's, yeah, 5,000 gold damage value difference. Another bombardment being used here, just even racking that up further. Absolutely ruining these blue horrors and the pink horrors and uh, the secret chariots also. Getting ground down in sustained combat in the trees is not where they want to be at all. I, I admire even Star for continuing to fight here, but I think it's hopeless at this point. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I would have probably thrown in the towel if I was in his position, but uh, yeah, we'll see. He's starting to get back a little bit on army damage value. Houseplant has quite a bit of resources banked up, so he's going to bring in three units, one each location. And he's also got some more pink horrors maneuvering in to fight the blue horrors in melee. Ah, oh, yes. This is what we want to see. Pinks versus blues. Oof. Oof. I mean, I, one thing I would say, the pinks right away have an advantage because they have two eyes and you can uh, see in a full, you know, 180 degrees, at least theoretically in front of them. Maybe not a full 180, uh, 180 but at least they have a much better cone of vision than the one-eyed blue horrors. So, yep. More Forsaken being brought in here. Blueberry Forsaken, just so, so good at this point. Uh, in the game's life cycle. Even with the nerf, like, they just straight up removed the spell resistance for Zinch Forsaken, and I think, I think they still need to be, like, 50 cost more, maybe. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know why they ever had that spell resistance to begin with. That was a weird one, for sure. Vomitus is so green, like, like, he is, like, greener than a green skin. Like, like, he is the same tone as as gobos and orcs and I mean if you were if you didn't know better if you were just like an orc or a gobo and you saw this guy wandering around the wastes you'd be like papa and then all of a sudden you see the boils and, and, and you smell the stench no doubt that is coming off of him and you think oh you know maybe it's not a green skin pink horrors have depth perception that's right Blue Horrors do not, which I can imagine would make it um, much harder to swing your little daggers or to uh, actually use your missiles effectively. Maybe that's one thing they could do for Blue Horrors is give them like a huge accuracy nerf, although I don't think that would actually do much. Accuracy only matters so much in this game when you're shooting at targets the size of three-story buildings. You know, like Mammoths or Dread Saurians or Big Giga Bears. It's a flying jabber slide. <laughs> Kawasaki demon. <laughs> uh, yeah, even Star actually does manage to almost seize an objective before the end of the game. So, you know, it wasn't a uh, completely hopeless effort, but... 
Vomit just makes me want the lime margarita. Oh. I don't know why that's so disturbing and hilarious to me. Just like, imagine like a Nurgle lime margarita. Just. <laughs> I don't know why that's such a hilarious image in my mind. Or just like it, like this guy with like a, like a margarita glass just sipping all fancy with his pinky out. Can you imagine that? Man. Any of you artists out there are looking for inspirations. There's there's one you can draw. Fancy vomitus. Uh is Apple teeny flavor? <laughs> oh wow, what a game. GG. I mean that was uh that was a Zinchian clinic. The the Herald? People sometimes say like, oh, why would you even bring the Herald when the when you have Kairos or the Exalted Lord of Change? Because the Herald is ridiculously cheap for how good he is. Um, so, yeah. That's uh, that's quite strong. Uh, the Change Forsaken, five in the starting army, also quite strong. Boltist manages to be here. I don't know exactly what he's doing, but I guess getting some Kindle Flames by casting various Lore of Fire spells. <laughs> no, not Margarita Pizza. <laughs> that's a different Demon Prince. Um... Anyway, <laughs> yeah, the rest of the army actually is just kind of here. A lot of a lot of blues performance, but uh, yeah, credit to Nasty Harold there. He finishes off Vomitus more or less by himself, and Vomitus does nothing, which is why I say take Bellicor. Um, or does one of the Demon Princes have a shield? I think the Slanesh one might have a shield, actually, like a missile block chance. If that's the case, that might be the one to go with, actually, against Zinch, so you can block some of the missile fire. Um, but, I mean, some of the some of the stuff for Demons Undivided does okay. Chariot's definitely had a bad time. Um, yeah. It's, uh, it's a game. I mean, it was, it was a pretty one-sided, so there you go. Uh, he can summon, yes. He has a summon, and he has access to Lore of Fire. Yes, so I can't believe it. We've made it to the fine final round. Let me just quickly check on the best of five. And last map is going to be uh, Death Pass. We'll let them get their faction picks locked in. What a series, guys. What a series we've had. Game 5 coming at you live. Can't believe it. <laughs> These two players having an absolute duel of the fates here. So, uh, let's see. What has Houseplant not played? He hasn't played... Born, right? <laughs> Where was Red Ogor when the demon fell? Uh, he still has, I guess he has Cafe, um, Horn, and he played Nurgle in the series or only in the last series, I think. So he has a few options still of what he can choose. Um, yeah. Who did the sides? So he goes Corn, Ogre Kingdoms, and Kislev. Oh yeah, that's right. He hasn't played Kislev either this series. So Corn, Ogre King, Kislev, and he bans the Corn Mirror. Okay, interesting. So let's see what Even Star responds with. Even Star has done Zinch already. He's done Demons of Chaos. He's done Ogres. So he's gonna need to go with hmm. I might honestly go Nurgle. Nurgle into Ogre Kingdoms is hard, but I don't know.
maybe do cafe but cafe into kislev is pretty tricky because the sleds are so so ridiculous Oh, dude, the Corn Mirror is actually awesome. The Corn Mirror is by far the best matchup for Minotaurs with great weapons, actually. Uh, just because they murder Flesh Hounds, they help trade well into Bloodthirsters, they help trade well into Soul Grinders. They'll trade pretty decently with most of the Corn Infantry, except the Halberds, but then you have Bloodletters to kill Halberds. So, yeah. Uh, in a couple of Corn Mirror matches I've had, I have actually played that like two times. Um, it was uh, both times a player who brought a bunch of Minotaurs with great weapons won. So, yeah. I think it's one, one matchup where even at their current price point, which is definitely too high, they can shine. They're also okay. Ogre Kingdom's matchup, if you can get them into the fight without them getting blasted beforehand, they can murder all sorts of stuff. Hmm. Yeah, he did. It's true. Uh, Houseplant is... He, he, you know, became his final form of the Plague Plant and <laughs> and won against Zinch with Nurgle with, by just, like, flooding the field with Plague Bearers. It was amazing. Uh, had to be one of the best Nurgle games I've ever seen. Honestly. And he didn't even use magic either. He literally didn't use Wind's magic. <laughs> uh, yep. Fun stuff. Been an awesome day. Thank you all so much for coming out. Been an absolute pleasure. Big thanks, Turn, for allowing me to... Uh, Host on his website. Definitely going to be doing this more often. I'll try and do once a week if I can. We'll see kind of what my schedule looks like. There are some things that are up in the air over the next couple of weeks, but definitely um, next weekend I may host an NA time tournament in the evening on like Saturday maybe, but no, he didn't have any soul grinders. He literally had... Okay, let me go back and look at the build real quick. Um... Okay, so he literally had two cultists, three spawns, five plague bears, and two nerglings for his starting army. And then. And what did he have in reserve? Let me see here. Uh, okay, here we go. Yeah, so he just had like Forsaken, Furies. One more spawn in reserve. He had his Herald of Nurgle Lord in reserve that I don't think he ever summoned. So, I mean, it was pretty much... Now, granted, I will say, from, from Zinch's perspective, they didn't have any Flamers or Knights. They had Doom Knights, but they didn't have any Flamers or the Horse Knights, which I think is a big mistake, because both of those units are really good in that matchup. But, yep. Yep. When's the next one? Uh, Well... You know what? Just for you, Ice Power, I will probably host one for Europe time next week as well. Why not? Maybe I'll do one. I don't know. Kind of just depends on a couple things, but most likely I'll announce it in the next couple days. Like, yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Uh, we'll, we'll get you going then. Definitely next weekend. I'll be hosting something probably Saturday morning again. Uh, well, I don't know. I, I just I literally just said I would do it Saturday evening. I don't know. We'll see. I'll have to talk to some people and see what their plans are. But definitely we'll have plenty of tournaments for you this week, guys. Power. Yes. And I'm planning on doing a midweek King of the Hill stream probably on Wednesday. Um so be sure to stay tuned for that as well. And yeah. Wednesday, we'll do King of the Hill. Maybe Thursday, we'll do a campaign stream. Monday, Tuesday, I'll just do videos. Probably no stream. Friday, it just kind of depends.
guess. Yes. Oh, time, time to have some fun. Oh, these guys are waiting on me. My bad. I'm just here chatting with you guys, having a grand old time. This is it, folks. The final of the final game five in a best of five between Houseplant and Even Star. Who will take home the grand prize? A little bit of cash and all of the bragging rights for the South Sea Mercenary League. Some wins on the Turin Total Tavern leaderboard as well. So uh, both of these players will be jumping up on the leaderboard. And whoever gets the actual tournament grand victory will, of course, be jumping substantially. So let's see what they can do here. Yes. All right. We'll start with Slanesh. It's going to be Slanesh versus Corn. Very fun stuff. Uh, starting for Even Star here. He's got a Herald of Slanesh on foot. Wow. It's an interesting choice. She is insanely fast on foot. I mean, literally cavalry speed on foot, which is nice. Pretty good weapon strength as well, but very squishy. Two cultists also on foot. Bunch of infantry here, a bunch of marauders with spears. Uh, two soul grinders, nice. The double soul grinder opening is pretty strong. You need to fight stuff in melee and sustain combat. This is kind of your best option uh, right here because it's anti-large, soporific musk, devastating flanker, reasonably fast. Um, yeah, anti-large of 25. This great all around heavy armor, which is something that Slanesh generally lacks. On the other side, for corn, we've got horn spawns, which are amazing in this matchup. That huge weapon strength just blasts light slanesh units. Uh, you've got some halberds up front. Cultist of corn is the actual lord here, quote unquote. Uh, and then some more halberds being summoned in immediately on game start. So interesting. Very, very interesting armies. Corn is going to be methodically making their way with their entire army, pretty much. No, not quite. Just a few units going over to secure Objective 3. Objective 2 is going to be the site of a massive battle, as is typical. Nice. So, uh, Ice Power, does that mean you're down to compose a... Uh, like a five-minute intro track for me? I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I mean, if you did end up making something, I'd probably use it, but anyway. You are the piano man, officially. Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, let's see. Right now, Houseplant's playing pretty patient. He doesn't want to overcommit too heavily into this center and just get bogged down. Looks like he's got his Lord out. That's going to be a Herald, I would imagine. If I want a classical piano track, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed. I could definitely think of uh, use cases for classical piano, tr classical piano tracks. <laughs> oh, come on, stabilize. We've been with no lag this whole time. Come on, don't drop. Don't drop. We've been doing so good. No. Oh, you have oh. been bested. There is only Oh, the dang it. Okay. Ah, oh, we were doing so good. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. Run it back. Run it back. Same builds. <laughs> banjo <laughs> dude i wish i knew how to play the banjo that's like 
ever since I was a little kid, that's one instrument that I uh, always, always wanted to know how to play. I love the sound of banjos. It's it's a very, very American sounding instrument. I don't know. It's just reminds me of country folks. Great. Great. Um yeah, I, I personally know how to play bass guitar. I know a tiny bit of guitar, tiny 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 bit of piano. But I uh I'm a pretty good bassist. Like I've I've experience playing bass. What 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 just happened? Um, so, open G tuning. Okay. I'm going to need to rehost, it looks like. Okay, I'm gonna have to have him rejoin this lobby because for whatever reason it just like kicked me out of their game right there. That was weird. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, just rehost it. Interesting. Okay, because like I don't know if I have any experience. But <laughs> piano and banjo, I can play bass guitar. Um, yeah, I think. Uh, not Great Book of Grudges in this chat, but the YouTuber Great Book of Grudges, I think, is he a drummer? Or, I know he's in bands. He also plays an instrument, so we could get him to play. Um, yeah, I mean, we could definitely do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, they got into the game, but thankfully I was able to catch them before they, they started. Oh, a little bit frustrating, but that's okay. Okay, ready on my end. Turn on vocals. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> now we're talking. Play some like 90s grunge rock or something. Oh, we're on the wrong map. That's okay. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, we'll just play it out. <laughs> we'll just play it out. I don't want to load for a fourth time. Oh, no. Oh, what happened? Oh, my. Okay. Um, so this is cursed. That's okay. Okay, I switched it. I switched it. We're good. We're good. 
Good. We will load in for a fourth time. Why not? Why not? Okay. Come on, everyone. We can do it. We can do it. I believe. I believe. Keep your fingers crossed, everyone. Whatever little spells you gotta do. Okay, are we in? Both in? Both players are in. I didn't get desynced. I think we're good, guys. I think, I think we're good, finally. Man, what anticipation. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> ah, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Soon they shall fight for Death's Pass. Oh, nice. Just immediately getting to it. I love it. You can do it! <laughs> okay, so probably about the same opening. Um, yeah. Both players just kind of making their way forward. Even Star straight up the pipe here. Old Naruto crab claw run over here. Yes. The corn spawns should be pretty, pretty good. Norskin, or sorry, Marauders of Slanesh, I think. I think they have the same HP as Norskin Marauders. They have a pretty good amount of HP, but generally just pretty squishy. Like for a spear unit in this cost range to only have 32 melee defense is actually pretty bad, to be honest. 26 attack is, is decent. It's definitely on par, but like 36 to 40 is kind of what you would expect for a lot of spear units in this in this sort of class. So anyway, wow, look at that Soul Grinder getting super aggressive. Just straight charge into the corn spawn. And now it's turned around. And unfortunately, it does seem to be wedged in between several spawn where it can't actually get loose and start moving. Took some unnecessary damage there. Same thing over here. This, uh, this Slanesh Soul Grinder getting countercharged in here by hounds. Gets stuck up in the spawns. And even Star just getting a little bit... Uh, overly aggressive here, maybe. Yeah, didn't do a whole lot of damage. Took some unnecessary damage in return. I like the attempt. I like the the sort of baiting of your opponent and trying to draw them out and get uh, get them out of position. But it's only good if you can do it without taking too much damage in the process. Nice little slap right there. A little whiplash. Lanesh Soul Grinder is going full Leroy. Exactly. <laughs> A uh, decent GPU to run this game, uh, you know. Mm, you could probably get away with like a 10 series or a 20 series, like a, a 10, 1070 might be okay, honestly, or a 1060. You could probably do it well enough. Yeah, if you if you want to run on ultra, you have to get like a like a 30, 30, 90 or something, you know, like a top tier graphics card to be able to run it in top settings uh the game is still not fully optimized yet but uh, yeah if you want to run on ultra uh, with an i5 i think you're going to struggle even with just that processor because at least on the campaign map there's some pretty processor intensive uh parts of it uh like i know when i upgraded from my old setup where my gpu got fried. I got the same GPU. It's a, I have a 3080 in this, and I also have a 12th gen uh, brand new Intel i9. And with that alone, with the same graphics card, I did notice a pretty significant performance increase. So with only an i5, I mean, you'll be fine. It's not like you're going to be behind the curve. I don't know. 
if you if like getting a super high-end card would be worth it. But anyway, talking more about this massive brawl going down, we've got all the spawn piling in. Both soul grinders are struggling pretty badly. A frontal assault is definitely 100% going to go in Korn's favor every single time in this matchup. Slanesh is definitely meant to outmaneuver and try and hit from the sides and rear. And right now, they're just they're caught in a situation where they have no choice but to fight face first into this disgusting, absolutely violent corn blob. <laughs> that is uh, going to be a big problem. Also, no one is going to cap this objective number one, so some quick vanguard reinforcements from either player to try and secure that objective, get a lead on points, is going to be pretty impactful. Right now, though, this huge blob in the center just brawling. Keep it right here as the corn spawn all absolutely maul everything in sight. I mean, almost 200 weapon strength per model is just ridiculous. It's by far the most of any monstrous infantry in the game, and they are making their presence felt, certainly. Uh, the summoned demonettes are just having a hard time doing much of anything here. Now, those are actual brought in demonettes. Okay, even better. Like the Seekers here, they probably got some damage in. Yeah, 500, about half paid for themselves, but just struggling really get consistent uh, consistently good engagements or unable to pretty much seize the center they're slowly providing enough capture weight to do so over here i mean a phase first engagement even demonettes into a halberd in uh, granted they are not just any halberd infantry they're corn halberds which are very very good um, but even still this is again just not a great engagement or demonettes, unfortunately, to go straight in here. They will destroy on a rear charge, certainly. But phase first like that is going to struggle, not to mention the Furies coming in to change the fight. So, yeah, already 2,500 value ahead is Houseplant. Even Star falling behind a little bit there and on both tickets and on damage values. Not looking great for Slanesh. Slanesh plays pretty well from behind, though, as you probably know. Uh, the catch-up mechanic is still in play. It's, I think they tweaked it a little bit. I don't remember exactly what they did, but... Let's see here. Catch-up mechanic certainly hasn't yielded anything yet. And now almost 3,000 damage value ahead. Houseplant is definitely taking home the win here. He wants it. Definitely, definitely wants it. Ooh, this is... This is bad, though. Those Seekers just barely missed their charge. Oh, man. Slanesh in shambles right now. Just getting wrecked by Korn. It's uh, it's tough. You know, Houseplant's a very, very good player. Been playing this pretty much exactly how he should. His army composition is also crispy, too. I love the pick of Korn spawn in this matchup. Like, just in general, I think the, the spawns for all the worries of, or all the Mono God Chaos factions are good. Don't get me wrong. Uh, corn spawns explicitly, though, here, uh, they're just, they're insane. They're, the fact they only cost a thousand, they should, probably could be 1100 and they would still be really, really strong. Not like this. One of your units has been destroyed. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Yes. Yes, indeed. The Furies coming in. The Corn Furies, even. I mean, the fact that they have Frenzy, they just do more damage. They have just higher base weapon damage than the regular Furies. That ends up mattering quite a bit in this specific matchup. Again, it's just, I think, I think it's a weird one for Slanesh. Yeah, even Star is going to go ahead and throw in the towel there. And that will be the tournament, the game, the match all of the above congratulations to houseplant very well played to even star and all the other competitors as well who joined in to the tournament today thank you all so much for participating thank you guys who are here watching live and after the fact as well you guys are the reason why i do this so thank you all so much but it's been an absolute pleasure let's go for the final breakdown i mean the corn spawns they're just they're so angry what are they angry about no one knows probably the fact that they have tentacles for faces but there you go. They definitely pay for themselves. The Halberd's also trading okay. Some of them getting ransacked, but that's also just fine. Uh, the Flesh Hounds come in here, deal some pretty solid damage for the uh, Slanesh boys. I mean, I like the opening of the double uh, the double Soul Grinder. I think you just got to play back to your support. Maybe take a little bit more cavalry, at least. You can play more mobile if you want to try and get that hit and run going right off the bat. 
Uh, likewise, I really like the Chariot for the Herald of Slanesh. It's a little bit risky against Corn in case you come up against a big, big, scary demon. But uh, I definitely, the anti-infantry damage, especially with the collision pack being fixed, I just think that that's a really good mount option to take. I would probably have taken that here and maybe taken the Cultists in reserve. Heart Seekers also didn't get used. Seekers got misused. But there you go. So it's a tough draw. But it was a great series overall, and very well played to both players. Even Star Man just to earn himself a small amount of prize money as well, and of course, Houseplant the victory. So, thank you all so much for coming out. It's been my pleasure. You guys are the best. If you're not subscribed for whatever reason, be sure to subscribe, hit that like button, share with friends. All that stuff helps so, so much. What helps the most, though, is just you guys being here. So, thanks again for that. We'll see you next time. So long, folks.